Zombieland Double Tap Thoughts film. Now, as usual, this contains spoilers, including for the first movie. And it's a long video, but there are time codes for sections in the description box. So, my own quote unquote film critic rating for this is an 8 out of 10. And my personal rating is also an 8 out of 10. To, it's it's perhaps, perhaps appropriate that Rosario Dawson is in this. Because this movie, you know, blasted away the dull gray years since the last, yeah. And I'll grant that it is perhaps, you know, the, the fact that the movie itself admits that, you know, like right off the bat, you know, you have the narration of, oh, you're back again. Well, thank you. And it's, yeah, I do think it was, it would really have, if they hadn't admitted that, it would have felt, yeah. And I guess... Uh, yeah, let's see. Starting with the section notes taken while watching. Now, this movie it reminds it's it's a little bit like with Ant Man the Wasp and Deadpool two. It's kind of a lot of the same with but the the you know the jokes come a bit faster and. You know, it's it's a, yeah, the the, but they they you know they don't stray too far away from the, yeah. Now, the very first thing we see in the movie is that some zombies come at the Columbia lady, and she fights them back with using the the, as a blunt instrument the the torch i guess it's called that was badass and funny i kind of hope that we get like i'd really like to see other studios do this kind of oh, what's what's the one with the unicorn i could i think the unicorn if it if it got enough speed it could probably spear a couple of zombies with that or, or whatever the case may be you know I, I have to admit, I don't know enough of them. To, to, do, do they still have the, the... There used to be one... I don't know if it's still around. There used to be one where it's like a guy running off like the... Lakeshore Entertainment? Was that what it's called? The, he's like running off and about to dive. You know, maybe a couple of zombies chase him or or something. I, 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 I hope this starts a trend. I, I think it's... You know, it's, it's not the first time we've seen... You know, Men in Black had like... She had shades on for one of those movies. I forget which. I feel like it's the second or the third, but I'm not 100% certain. And we're introduced to the Homer zombie, which is just painfully dumb. And the Hawking zombie. And the Ninja zombie. And, yeah, we have narration from right away, like in the first movie. So, as they approach the White House, there's really, really great rock music playing, and, you know, you have this zombie killing, and I'm like, Doom flashbacks. I approve. I'm really glad that we, you know, we see from right away, Jesse finally moved past the double barrel that never made any sense. They, they pointed out in the commentary track that, like, people were like, why, why does he stay with that the whole movie? And I feel like they, they had an answer, but I don't, I don't think it made a lot of sense, but I honestly don't remember. But, yeah, is I, I don't mind that he started out with it, because he, what he started out with at the start of the movie was basically what he could get his hands on. But over the rest of the movie, they have a bunch of other guns, and he keeps sticking to something that ineffectual. 
you know, he's the one who does the double tap, which means that he empties the gun every time he kills a zombie. It's, yeah. And we have been on a bigger action scene than any in the first. And I think, you know, it kind of, it kind of had to, obviously, they're going to have a bigger budget. I was I saw on the Wikipedia, they point out, well, we need a bigger budget because these are now some of the most, you know, some of those bankable stars, which, you know, yeah, not, not as much 10 years ago when, when they made the first one. And the, the, right, but yeah, so, you know, bigger budget and immediately we, we see it in action with the, Yeah, with the with the fight in front of the White House. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't ah, excuse me. Huh. I am not sure. I guess I guess I shouldn't ah, excuse me. The computer I use to look up notes is really old and might not be able to handle if I open anything other than the notes and the computer that I'm live streaming through definitely can't handle it you know if yeah I shouldn't open on either but I I don't know I huh ah there it is Right. I feel like both of these movies, first and foremost, are road movies more than like straight action movies. You know, in both movies you have scenes where there really aren't very many zombies in an area because they're, they're driving from place to place. And I'm really glad. It's it's like with, with the Blade Runner sequel. I'm really glad that they didn't like overcorrect. You know, neither of the Blade Runner movies are really action movies. It's just that what action there is, is well done. You know, it, it's intense and such. You know, we, we know that... I, I, I'm not 100% certain how much action movie cred is Ridley Scott had back in the 80s. But certainly we know he can direct amazing action. You know, Gladiator, for example. So it's not like that movie couldn't have been, but but it's not meant to be. It's more atmospheric. And so I, I'm really glad that this wasn't just like wall-to-wall -wall action scenes or such. And yeah, just briefly, I want, you know, I feel like all four stars very much wanted to be in this movie. You know, that's something you sometimes have excuse me, with like a belated sequel, sometimes sequels in general, whether or not they're belated, you have this thing of, okay, so, so you know, this and that person definitely didn't really want to be back, but contractual obligation. I didn't really feel like that was the case here. Now. I enjoyed the scenes of them you know, living in the White House, and honestly, I'm probably going to be referring to people in this movie by the actor's name. The the I respect the choice to have everybody named by. I mean, I guess it's not it's not always where they come from, but it's some. It's somewhere that's really important to them. Some, yeah, I respect that choice. I'm not. I think I'm just gonna mix up the names, honestly. So I'm I'm gonna be going with actor names, other than the guy from Berkeley because I don't know that actor. But yeah, you know Jesse and Emma are together. I'm I'm glad that that's, yeah. And Abigail wants a boyfriend. And a family in general. And we immediately see that Woody loves the the beast, the car with the, the Gatling gun. I will say the Gatling gun really did not see enough use. 
you know, there was a little bit. I do think that, I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess the idea was you're supposed to think you're going to get a lot of the, the Gatling gun, but then the car gets crushed by that, the, the monster truck car. I'm, uh, I'm not certain if that's what it's called, but that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, you know, that, that thing, and, and then that's the one that really kills a lot. Now, let's see. I do feel like all, all four of the, of the returning cast members, you know, there was something it made sense, you know, they, they all had some conflict, and it made sense based on the first movie what their conflict was, what they were. Yeah. Now, and Abigail does not want... I, I just took to calling it the White House Elvis Nixon gun. That, that real, that is... Excuse me. It is hilarious to me that Elvis, that Nixon, excuse me, was the one that, you know, El Elvis couldn't get to meet one of the really cool presidents, just Nixon. Now. Let's see. Yeah, I'm just briefly going to say, apparently, the reason that... Okay, I'm, I'm probably going to mess up at least some of these details, but I do just want to briefly say, apparently, Elvis, you know, he, he gave the gun to Nixon. He wanted to combat, like, un-American stuff or something like that. And one of the things was the Beatles. And, you know, I, I learned this from watching, like, this documentary was maybe the history of rock stuff in there, I forget. That that is an awesome documentary. If if you get the chance to see it. But anyway, yeah, you know, I was watching it that with my then fiance, now ex fiance, who's American and Southern. And I asked her, why are the Beatles un American? And without missing a beat, and with complete sincerity, she looked me right in the eyes and said, well, they're not American. And that has stuck with me ever since. That is truly amazing. And that's why that's why some studio dunce inflicted the monkeys upon the world. Because America couldn't handle that a different country had something so influential. So they needed their own Beatles. And where the actual Beatles were, you know young people who liked each other and were good at music, and the monkeys were just assembled. Anyway. And, I, you know, Emma got Jesse, of, you know, like, was it first edition, I want to say, Lord of the Rings. And He's like, oh, and you sullied it by writing your name. And you wrote mine, too. You were so thorough. And it's just, wow. I will say something like that. You, you do kind of get why she, why she ups, up and leaves like that. And Jesse wants to marry Emma, who worries about divorce. And Abigail and Emma steal the beast, I think they call it, and let's see, yeah, and and leave like, you know, in in the, yeah, in the first one when the, yeah, when when Jesse calls Woody a cockblocking robot. Oh, by the way, I I'm probably gonna swear in this one, like in the movie. I'm probably gonna quote lines from the movie. And they make a bunch of jokes about Jesse, 
like him, you know, his his routine of taking care of himself and such. And I can't tell. Okay, I'm just going to read aloud and see if I can figure out what this means. Would he alone want one more split? Oh, right, right. Woody wants to be alone again. Split, yeah, split up. Yeah, that's right. And let's see. Yeah, and, and Woody talks about having Native American blood in his veins. Yeah, for, for just just in case you thought that they're that the the when they visit the Na that Native American Yeah. In in the first movie, when they visit that place and we even have, you know, they even have Abigail run, you know, yeah, with like the, the hair and the, the spear and the, yeah, just in case you thought, oh, you know, what, whatever, they just didn't, they didn't realize that, that was going to be perceived as racist. Here they just go, you know, really lean into that and have him claim to be part Native American and like later in the movie he's like, what was it like the names of, of various ones or something and Madison thinks he's having a stroke and Right, and, and Zoe Deutsch, you know, immediately hugs Jesse and she learns the rules. I mean, I guess ultimately it's that she I she she that's the th I, I'm not entirely sure does she actually like him? I mean certainly there's that thing about she wants to have sex with Jesse because she's been alone for so long. And if Jesse doesn't have sex with her, he, she's going to go have sex with Woody. But the... Let's see. I mean, there was that thing about the... I mean, she does seem like she genuinely cares about the rules. Like the, the yeah, because because ultimately, if she doesn't like something, she ends up being sarcastic about it, even though it might take a while. She she ends up being sarcastic with Wichita. So the yeah, sorry. Sometimes I'm going to be using the the place names, but but yeah, the the so. Yeah, so I guess she does actually like him, which, of course, uh, you know, and then, then at the end, it's just like, ah, whatever, you know, she'll, the, the, I, I feel like they could have made that work better, even if, it, I, I get that it's supposed to be a joke that it's that easy to, to resolve this, but it still felt like lazy writing, and it did, like, I, I feel like, I'm not saying that American Pie 2 is a good movie, but I do think that the the I guess I shouldn't give away. I'm just briefly going to say some characters that you don't expect to end up together end up together. And I thought that movie made it work better than this movie made it work with 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 Zoe and Berkeley, you know, I, I just I feel like like we just had the thing where Abigail said even a twelve year old knows who Bob Dylan is. I feel like they could have used that that he 
I forget, what did she call him? A song copier, not a song writer, or something like that. And yeah, just like have have him maybe, you know, you know, this this calls for a song, and he starts playing something, and it's like Abigail knows that he didn't write that. The audience knows he didn't write that. But then Zoe goes, "Oh my God, you came up with that yourself," and then he's like, "Yes, yes, I did." And then you know, I don't know. I get, I get that it's supposed to be. Oh, you know, she's, you know, what what is finicky? Is that the word? She's, you know, she'll she'll jump from one guy to other another. That's part of the whole dumb blonde thing that they're going with for her. And yeah, they know that it's ridiculously dated and offensive of a thing to do and yeah I'm not gonna lie I found a lot of her jokes really really funny and let's see here yeah and yeah she wants to hear all the rules and she thinks that Woody is a lot older than he is and she's like oh you know some people his age are left alone and it's sad and excuse me Let's see. i i enjoy the the little moments of like when when at first she seems like she's just always happy always cheery but then occasionally you do see, no, 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 if she's, like, there are certain times where she, something else will come out. And, like, when, when Jessie's like, I, I, when we, we just met, and, just, and she's like, listen, if, we, if you're not going to do it, I will bite the bullet and I will fuck the old man. I, th I thought that was, that was pretty funny. And, and yeah, yeah, and later you have the, the thing with, you know, oh, sarcastic, aren't we? And then, like, oh, I really missed this. Was that sarcasm? Is this, uh, I, I felt like they did a good job. She was probably the most consistently funny, I, I feel like. Now. Right, yeah, just briefly, I want to... Uh, I just, I just feel like the 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 whole thing with with Zoe, you know, she again I get it I get that that's part of the point. She's supposed to be like this ridiculously like you know Jesse he doesn't mind that the you know yeah that that she's stupid because she's attractive. She wants to have sex with him, and the traits, you know, the, there are a lot of these traits about him that other people really hate that she actually does like. You know, for example, the rules. You know, I'm, I, are, is there, excuse me, I'm not sure there's ever a single thing Jesse says or does that she clearly does not like I guess yeah I guess the one time she doesn't like something about Jesse is when he says he's not sure about having sex with her so soon after meeting I, I think that might be the one time that and and yeah it's supposed to be that thing you know oh guys want to have sex with you know a, a young stupid woman who you know who, who just likes the things about the, you know there's no there's no challenge there. There's no, yeah, the, the, that might have come out wrong. She's never going to challenge, like, yeah, like, like Emma is like, you know, no, put the, put the, what was it, the shades on or whatever. You know, cover his eyes, you know, before we have sex. And the, the, yeah, you know, the, the, when there's something about him that bothers Emma, she's actually going to talk to him about it. That, you know, if, if there's something he's doing that she wants him to change, she's going to tell him, you know, that's a real relationship. But Zoe never does. And that's supposed to be the, the dream woman. 
but the the yeah you know and and ultimately emma doesn't even i don't know i mean i guess technically that they were broken up if the the you know she left and she you know she only later in the movie admits that she did come back to be with him not just for ammo or whatever but you know yeah so so the you know it's it's not so much that the the he didn't cheat he didn't cheat on emma but he you know went with a rebound girlfriend almost immediately and the yeah you know but but ultimately emma doesn't say you know we you know we we need more time if if you're going to i f i feel like it's a pretty reasonable thing for her to to say if if you hook up with someone else just because we've been you know apart for for so you know yeah the the idea that they would just you know go back into the get back together like that it's it's not very realistic it's not very likely but it is the kind of thing that appeals to a lot of young men and they expect more young men to watch this movie than young women so let's see and we have the enjoy the little things i did find that mildly you know that yeah woody imp implying that Jesse isn't very well found. And Emma is back, saying that Abigail is gone. And what on earth did I write? Oh, right, right, yeah. The, the, yeah, that's right, because, of, yeah. And Woody flips out that Abigail is dating a musician and Woody hates hippies and you know the the no this has to be intentional and I appreciate it in the first movie she didn't know Gandhi when when you know the the yeah the the Yeah, yeah, when, when they, you know, Bill Murray's house, and she's like, who's Bill Murray? Well, that's like not knowing who Gandhi is. Who's Gandhi? And then in this, you know, Emma specifically says that the, the you know, Berkeley uses nonviolence, like Gandhi. So now she knows Gandhi, even though she doesn't necessarily, yeah, I appreciate that. You know that that is the thing that uh, like a uh, with this movie, Ant Man and the Wasp and Deadpool two, you can tell they sat down, they watched the movie over and over again, and they figure you know let's okay let's try to reference this and that and let's lean into this kind of joke and, and such. And. And yeah, and Emma says, you know, she almost, she did the one thing she never does with Abigail, tells her no, and she left a note. And Emma, although it takes, you know, it's it's hard for her to do, but she does apologize to Jesse. And, and I, I do like the, the, you know, how she points out, you know, she doesn't like, because women are always apologizing to men. For things they shouldn't apologize for and and that you know I I feel like that makes sense with her characterization that's you know that that's that feels like something that could have come out of the mouth of the character in the first movie I I yeah And then Zoe shows up, and she's even wearing one of his T-shirts. Very clearly, the the uh, yeah, I'm afraid I didn't write down. Yeah, I'm um, um, but but it was it was a nerd T-shirt for sure. 
So, yeah, very clearly one of his, which, yeah. And then Emma is mad at Jesse because of the rebound. Now, the the Elvis obsession in this, the, the Woody having this obsession with Elvis, I feel like that made... I like the Twinkie thing in the first one, but the Elvis thing gave them a lot more to work with, you know, and I feel like, I mean, yeah, let me just briefly say, I enjoyed watching this movie more than the first one, and I did, I do really love the first one, but, yeah, I'm, uh, and, and I feel the same way about Ant-Man Wasp and Deadpool 2, all three of these movies I enjoy watching them more than the first one, but I respect that in all three cases, the first one is probably better than the second one. But, yeah, I, the, the, the Twinkie thing worked well in the first one. I If the Elvis thing had been the first one, then it wouldn't necessarily have been as... The, the reason the Elvis thing, it's, it's clearly, the, you know, it's, it's the new version of the Twinkie thing. And it just, it gives them so much to milk. And I don't know for sure, but I I honestly believe that Woody Harrelson is a big Elvis fan. I 100% I believe that. And again, it fits the character from the first movie. So, let me think. That's right, yeah. I had written in my notes, did it really take Abigail a whole month to ask the, yeah, to, to ask about the, the we, but then again, she only met Berkeley a few days before that scene. They didn't meet Berkeley immediately after when the month, no, yeah, it works. And we have jokes about how jealous Emma is of Zoe. This this part really shouldn't work, but it does. When when the you know they they give Zoe the binoculars and she puts them on backwards. And she's like, ah, oh, the old man's really tiny now. And that by itself is funny. And they could just move on. But then she's like, tiny, normal, tiny, normal. And and ultimately, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's not that it actually takes up that much running time. But it's a joke. And jokes that you you need you need to move fast. You know, you you need to move quickly on to the next thing. And it really shouldn't work that she keeps, I, I think, maybe a full 10, maybe even 20 seconds of just her going, tiny, normal, tiny, normal, tiny, normal. And and after a few seconds, I was like, oh, they're going to keep going. And that it's it's that thing of, they, they kept going for so long and stopped being funny. But then they kept going that it started being funny again. And it was just, yeah, I I got to say, that that really... It, it worked. It was incredibly funny. And, you know, the, the Emma does really great in, in, I mean, she's, she's incredible in this. She's, she's so funny in this. I guess I can't ultimately completely say which I, I like best of the, I feel like Abigail doesn't get enough, but the other three, I mean, ultimately, yeah, they're, they're tied. But, uh, and, and all three of them play off Zoe incredibly well. So, yeah, the, the, let's see, I'd, I'd really like to see Zoe in something. I mean, 
all of these actors, but I've seen, you know, I mean, I haven't seen Abigail Breslin a lot, but I mean, I'm fairly certain that's her in Signs, right? That is wild. But yeah, that was 17 years ago. So yeah, okay. I, you know, that's what happens. Time passes. People, you know, grow up, whatever. But she was great in that. You know, I mean, obviously you have the thing. That was back when, when Shyamalan did that brand of, of acting or, you know, directed that kind of acting performance. I thought it worked a lot of the time. I felt like some of the things she said felt like things that children actually do say. Like the, the thing with, there's a monster outside my window. Can I have a glass of water? That really, that, that really rings true as, as one of those things that children would actually say. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I guess these are the, that's those, that's the three movies I've seen Abigail Breslin in. But I think she's great in all three. It's, let's see. But, but yeah, you know, all, all of these actors are, are really great. In, but I, I believe this is the first thing Aziza Ligoic in. And I, I really, really enjoyed her performance. And it's, you know, I, I watched a little bit of like interview out of character and she's so different which I don't know I, I ultimately I do kind of feel like certainly Jesse and Woody play to their type kind of but yeah you know Emma is really great at the kind of nasty X type you know it is the the yeah you know, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 also has some some stuff where she and the... I mean, that's not so much Nasty X, but it is this sort of thing of, like, we're kind of sort of not completely back in a relationship. And, and just, yeah. I mean, I've seen her in a lot of other stuff, and it wasn't the first thing I saw her in, but to me, she'll always be Gwen Stacy. You know, yeah, like I said, I, honestly, the first thing I saw her in was probably the first Zombie Land. And, and she's great there, but Gwen Stacy, you know, yeah, for, yeah, for those who don't know, I, I read Spider-Man back when I was 13 years old, so Gwen Stacy was one of the first characters that, let's see, franchise characters that I was introduced to, and, Yeah, Zoe rescues Emma with the... I, I did find that a little, like, did Emma really trust her to do that? Because Emma didn't take cover at all. Like, she was reloading, but she knew the guy was still coming. I mean, I, I guess I figured that... I, I feel like she would be trying to bash, you know, keep keep him away by hitting him with the, the gun butt or whatever, but... I don't know, I guess she, maybe she did really trust that, yeah, I don't know. And then Jesse rescues Zoe, and we have the first T-800 zombie, and I I have to admit, I, I like this, this bit, the, you know, you always, every time one of the rules comes up, it's, you know, it appears on screen as a graphic, and then, you know, We've seen the double tap graphic, you know, come up a lot of times over the course of these two movies. But then with the T-800, the double tap isn't enough. So they just keep going and then, you know, double tap, quintuple tap, septuple tap, and then it ends up just saying whatever the ninth version of double tap is or something like that. That's pretty funny. And... Yeah, and apparently this is the point in the movie where Berkeley whips out. Oh, wait, no, yes. I'm, I'm not sure it's the first, it's not the first time we see that Berkeley has a guitar. But it is the, I forget what Todd in the Shadows calls this, but it's the, it's that specific type of, like, douchebag. The, the white guy with acoustic guitar douchebag. And... Yeah, that was 
the douche is strong in this one. And yeah, and Zoe Deutsch, you know, basically invents Uber, which I'm fairly certain Uber didn't exist in 2009. And since Zombieland 2 exists in a world where nothing happened after 2009, well, like, yeah, yeah, nothing happened, basically, in, in culture. All has been in zombie surviving. So Uber doesn't exist in this world, and basically the writers are saying it would take, you know, only someone as stupid as Zoe's character would actually be be stupid enough to come up with that and and they're like with what they're just they're gonna try to kill you yeah but they'll have a point system if they try to kill you you give them zero points and if they don't try to kill you, you give them five points or four points whatever that was yeah that was, that was pretty funny and zoe seemingly becomes a zombie And I, I, I have to admit, I, I quite enjoyed this joke. She's a living, thinking being. Well, she's a living being. That's... And, and the, I... I think every time Emma does, like... I, I, I love it when she tells jokes. But when the performance becomes a little bit more physical or she does something kind of silly to further illustrate, I love that. I really, really love, like, in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I love it when she laughs, shut up, it's funny. And the, the and, and in this, she's like, you know, you, you know, she's going to become a, like, a, yeah. that's a zombie, not a velociraptor. It just, that was incredibly funny. And I have to admit, the thing with, like, oh, it's a nut allergy, I did realize that, you know, right as the, the that first scene was playing out, before the movie reveals that it was a peanut allergy, because, or not an allergy, I forget if it was peanut, because at the end of the day, yeah, you know, she, like, her, her tongue enlarges, and, like, her face, you know, it's not like a full on, but I do, I really respect the fake out because when Jesse saved her life, excuse me, the zombie, I th was he maybe like, he, he was biting in her, into her shoe or something like that. The moment you see that, you're like, oh, did he, did he get through? Because if he got through, she's going to turn. So when she starts seemingly turning, we accept that that, you know, I, I thought that was, and, and when it happens to Thomas and Luke Wilson, I want to say, I'm sorry, I'm not that good at telling the Wilsons apart. I'm fairly certain it's Luke. Owen Wilson's the guy who always says, wow, and this is Luke Wilson. I feel like Luke Wilson, he was the, he was the guy that, he was the guy who was with Cameron Diaz in both of the Charlie's Angels movies, I feel like. Yeah, I've, I've, I've loved the Wilsons in a lot, but I will cop to, I, Cop down to, cop up, cop somewhere too, that I I'm not the best at telling them apart. But anyway, when they start turning, it's like you know they they, you know we we spot that they were bitten. We didn't see them bitten because we didn't see them, we didn't see the the, the fight itself as such. Excuse me. I I do just briefly wanna, when when. The, the thing with the, the rules and the commandments, the, the, there was the, yeah, like, like the, the, you know, he, yeah, Jesse is like, ah, 
teamwork, why didn't I think of that? Or why, why wasn't that my number one rule? And I just feel like, I don't mind that he comments on it, but he's saying the opposite of what he should be saying. Like, the, the, the logical thing for him to say would be, well, when I started doing the rules, I didn't, I, I was alone, so I didn't do teamwork. You know, something like that, but, because he doesn't, he hasn't rearranged them since the first one, right? I mean, the first one's still cardio, the second one's still the double tap, so, yeah, I, I don't know. And, yeah, at this point I noted Zoe is not in a lot of the film, but that was before I knew she was coming back. I thought that they were going to reveal. I, I do really respect that, you know, he, he shot above her head. He didn't want to kill her. And then it turns out later, you know, she recovered from the nut allergy. Is that, do people just recover that they need some kind of treatment? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But, again, I, I respect the fake out. And I, I thought that he had killed her and they would have a line. Like, I mean, you see them eating train legs. That's, the, again, it's, you know. The, the moment I saw that, I, I did wonder, oh, are they going to do a nut allergy thing or something? But, uh, yeah, the I thought that she was going to turn out to have been killed by Jesse. And then, like, suddenly it dawns on Emma. Like, like she's, you know, she, she looks at the at the trail mix or, or she's like, Let, let's roll down the window. I'll, I want to throw out this empty bag of trail mix or something. And she's like. Was Zoe allergic to peanuts? And then Jesse's like, oh my god, I killed a woman, or something like that, you know, but let's see. Yeah, they could they could even have something like you know the the like yeah, yeah, like they could they could have some kind of thing of like she was, you know, she was just an innocent victim and I blew her brains out. And then Woody be like, no, no, come on, no. She didn't have brains. You just blew her head off or so, something like that. And we go to Graceland, but that's not where Abigail is. And nor, nor Berkeley. I like the thing about how, like, you know, Woody is really disappointed finding out he doesn't have the same shoe size as, as Elvis, but Jesse does. He really deserves it for making Jesse pull off his boots. But yeah, that was that was really funny. The the yeah. And I really Rosario Dawson's intro was awesome. Like she, you know I I forget the exact but she like yeah, she like I think he's like playing the piano and then she comes in, she slams down that thing right onto his, his fingers. He's like, ah, and then she like knocks him off the, the chair, you know, and like points the, the gun right at his, his face. And she's like, start talking, you know, start talking. And he's like, you first. <laughs> My name's Tallahassee. And, okay, so this has to be the joke. When, when Rosario explains marrying, I mean, there's literally, there's no way that that story actually spread. Because the only four people who know that happened... I mean, it's not like they're going to go around telling that story. So the joke has to be, how could she possibly have heard? How could that urban legend have spread? I mean, they don't... Do they mention having met anyone in the 10 years? I don't think so. Yeah, I th which, which is also... I mean, the whole thing with, you know, it's been 10 years and so little has changed. They still somehow have enough food. I accept that they have enough food. What was it? Two months, I'm going to say, 
into the zombie apocalypse, but 10 years, and they're still just driving around in regular, like, I could accept it if they were living in a place where they could, like, farm or something, but, I mean, I guess the movie kind of sidesteps it with that thing of, oh, well, I mean, as long as there's rain, the, this mall's, was it the, I didn't, they didn't actually say, like, turbines keep spinning or something, but they, they had some kind of, like, the electricity's still on, and that, that's, that's gotta be, like, the, the out they give, because they didn't want a movie where they were, you know, doing farming or, or some kind of thing, so, yeah. I mean, honestly, I do believe, I'm not sure we see them do farming, but I believe that the Babylon, you know, that, I would actually, I would really have respected that as, a, like, you know, they're all doing this thing, ah, oh, well, they're helpless because they don't, you know, they, they don't, like violence, so they're completely helpless in this kind of situation. I would have really respected if there had been some kind of thing of, you know, they, at least they can make food, and we've been living off, you know, snowballs or something like that, you know. And we find out about Babylon. And... There are dozens of zombies. And Rosario also loves Elvis, just like Woody. Woody does a pretty good Elvis impersonation. And Woody and Rosario love interests. I, I have to admit, the, the thing with the running gag of no group sex, okay, group sex, that was, that was pretty funny. I do have to admit, I don't know, I mean, they're supposed to be hippies. I get, is that, is that supposed to be the idea that they're like, no, 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 but we're not like, you know, come on, we, we get that, you know, if you start having group sex, that, you know spreads like STDs or something, but the, the, yeah, but I, I, I really like that, that guy and, and the, like when he, when, when they, I'm still not 100% certain if Jess, I'm sorry, not Jesse, Emma, if Emma and Abigail are really supposed to be sisters, or if it's like, well, they kind of, you know, they they both needed someone else to help. You know, they, they, they were both con artists, but they needed, a, they needed a partner for a con. And so they started, you know, I, I'm not sure. Whether or not... No, it, it is funnier if they are siblings. And don't get me wrong, it's obviously messed up, but all the humor in the movie is messed up by design. But when he's like, no group sex, fine group sex, and you have these two sisters who literally just found each other again after, you know, one of them's before that the other one was dead, and just bringing up group sex. I don't, he doesn't know, I don't think, so it's not quite as bad as, like, but, and that's also just the, the idea, that puts the image in your head, you know, now, now, now you have to push the idea out of your head, of the, the, all of them just, yeah, that's, that's, that's funny, and it's, it's, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was funny. Yeah, here I noted about the rain keep powering them all. I, I know that was way, way back, but I, there were so many things to note that I didn't, but I remembered it and I noted it down. And, let's see. What is that name? Oh, right, Luke, yeah. Luke Wilson and Thomas, and the 
and there's the the pissing contest over, you know, Woody just had sex with Rosario, but usually Luke's the one who's with her, and again, it's really, like, I don't mind that it's, like, pushing buttons and such, I just don't see why so frequently these... I don't think the first one is that bad in this regard, but this one, there's all this, like, macho kind of... I mean, they talk about Rosario and, and having sex with Rosario, like, yeah, it, it's, it's really objectifying towards her, and... I just, I, I feel like it wasn't necessary, like, they could, yeah, just, uh, there, there are other offensive jokes to make, you know, you don't have to objectify women for the, honestly, I, I, I at least if they're gonna go there, at least have some kind of joke about, like, maybe, you know, she, she compares di their dick sizes or something. You know, but not just that, you know, well, when I'm around, I'm the one having sex with Rosario. Well, I had sex with Rosario more recently than you did. And, excuse me, they show off the rules uh, and and the, the, what's it called? Commandments. And and I, I also like that the commandments, that it actually, it was spelled in Roman numerals, and it had this, like heaven kind of thing going and, and the music also I want to say the yeah but both the sound design sound design and the graphics for it were kind of like biblical themed and yeah just it it was a I I I, I quite like that scene and it's again it's a scene that it goes on for a little while they don't just talk about having similar rules to each other they also talk about where those rules are in the order, but I did quite like, I really liked how it was this kind of bizarro version of Jesse and Woody, especially in their relationship, that, like, you know, he's like, ah, he's, he's, he's so smart, here, wear, wear the hat, wear the hat, and, you know, oh yeah, you think you've got good rules? Well, he's got commandments, and the you know his commandment, you know the, the he he thinks that these other commandments are all more important than the cardio one and and this whole thing that was, yeah. And yeah, and uh, honestly, I don't think that's what happened, but it felt like they were riffing, but there was so little of it that I didn't mind. Like I really felt like it. The movie Neighbors, I really feel like, felt like it kept grinding to a halt to have these actors funny riff off each other and it would just kill the pace. And that's something, I, th I think Neighbors 2, Soror Sorority Rising, is a superior film to na Neighbors in almost every single way. And one of them is that the riffing, I think the riffing still happened on set but it just didn't make it into the movie, and that's how it should be. Like, it's fine if you want to riff on camera as long as, like, there's a director. If he thinks you're pushing it, he's going to call cut, you know. But don't, nobody riffs like that in these situations in real life is the problem. Like, the in, in the first one, you have the thing of, oh, we're just going to go and we're going to tell them to keep it down. And they just keep talking about and, and like, rehearsing how they're going to do it. And talking about what they don't like about what the other one is doing to say keep it down and this whole thing, and it just, yeah, it it and anyway the the. I don't think it was actually riffing in this. I think it was the the way it was written in the script, but, I, yeah, I I thought it 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 worked. It, I can understand if there were some people who felt like it didn't work, but, yeah. And they, they talk about Terminator, and then immediately they lose a lot of my respect by saying that Terminator 2 is better than, Termin than the Terminator. That's...
and I uh, and and now we see both of them throwing away the drink, which I th I think that's a really good way to do a callback. I feel like if it hadn't been that there were two of them doing it now, if if they had just done it with one, I don't think it would have been as strong. And And I, I like the, the thing of, like, Luke and Woody hate each other, but Thomas and Jesse really get along. And where Woody hates Jesse, Luke really gets along with Thomas. So that whole thing was, yeah. And... Let's see. Yeah, and then start turning. In, in the first movie nobody turned into a zombie which yeah I'll, I'll get into that some more i don't necessarily think it's a bad thing but in in this one i guess they were really making up for for that like of the i guess there's really well no i mean ultimately zoe didn't turn it just looked like she did but and that's i mean that's the kind of thing you gotta do with the zombie comedy. You have to poke fun, like, yeah, you would get super uh, paranoid. And, like, someone having, I mean, if we saw her do that in a world that didn't have zombies, if we saw Zoe, like, we wouldn't be like, oh, God, she's turning into something evil. She's gonna kill us all. We'd be like, oh, did she eat something she couldn't, or, you know. So, so I, I really... That's the kind of joke you gotta make with with this. You know, you gotta poke fun at the the tropes. You know, when when if you know that it's a zombie story or they're infected or you know, not not they're not always zombies. If if you know that that's the genre, then when you see sim symptoms, you immediately think, oh, they're gonna turn. So you know, tur turn that on its head by having someone not turn and instead, yeah. Yeah, I guess ultimately only only those two characters did end up turning, but yeah. Now. And I I really like the, you know, we we see them shooting and the cameras moving around and it's like it's it's not and uh, it's not a real long take. It's made of of a lot of shorter ones, but it looks like a long take and yeah, I really like and it it was somewhat reminiscent of when Amber Heard turned into a zombie in the first one and chased Jesse around and he's, you know, having trouble finding something that's a useful weapon in his apartment and that sort of thing. And again, you know, obviously they're going to have something like that in there. I think they did a really good job of coming up with something that was actually interesting instead of just doing the same thing again. And... And the thing with, you know, zombie kill of the year, and, you know, it's this guy who crushes zombies with the, the Tower of Pisa. Excuse me. That was pretty funny. And, I mean, the first one does make a rep. Excuse me. You know, he says, oh, leaning Tower of Pizza boxes. So I guess, I yeah, I feel like they just, they went through, they wrote every single joke down. And, and, like, they, they probably had one of those, like, conspiracy with, like, yarn, like, you know, all, all these different things, and, and, like, yarn connecting with all of the different jokes from the first movie, and, like, you know, yarn going over to ideas on how to, how to reference it and such, but I, I saw someone say that, oh, you know, the, the zombie kill of the, the year, they brought that back, like, six times. I don't know, like, two or three, I don't know, I, I guess, exaggerating for effect or something. Yeah, I, whatever. The, the, yeah, the, the, you know, you have the thing with the guy using the, was it com combine, whatever, harvester thing to, to, you know, gore this zombie, and then you have the pizza. I think those are the only one, yeah, and, and, Right before the, the Harvester thing, we hear about Woody doing one, and then Jesse's like, ah, that's not the best one, because there's this one, you know. It, it really wasn't that 
many. And, you know, obviously the Leaning Tower of Pisa, that's a bigger version of in the first one where, what was it, Knickerbocker or something, you know, she, she had a piano dropped on one. So, yeah, again, I I felt like it was a, a good way to do a, a bigger, and let's see, you have the... And, and the thing with, you know, dropping something heavy, that was also referenced several times in the Babylon, there near the end. Now, I gotta say, Rosario and Woody are really sweet together. If they make, like, a movie where just it's just it's the two of them that are the main couple, the main characters, I'd probably watch that. And... Yeah, and and ultimately, yeah, in in this movie, every major female character is paired up with someone, and the the like. I mean, I guess there's no real. They don't really make sexual references about Abigail, but maybe that's because the la literally like. We, the audience, have, you know, or have been able to. Again, I haven't seen her in pretty much anything else. But the last time we, we saw her character, she was 12 years old. So maybe they felt uncomfortable about making, you know, but the, yeah, basically other than her, you know, with Emma, there's the thing of, you know, she, Again, I liked her in this movie, but ultimately, to an extent, she is reduced to jealous about, you know, she, she does actually want Jesse back, but, so she's upset about Zoe, and Zoe almost immediately has sex with Jesse. Rosario very clearly has sex with Woody, and has earlier had sex with Luke. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that wasn't, yeah. Again, they just, they don't have to go, there are other ways to have offensive jokes. You don't always have to, like, I'm just, I'm just saying, when I sat down and watched, rewatched for the first time in many years, Married with Children, with the first episodes that aired in 1987, these were some of the same jokes. I'm just saying, can we, I, I think we're, I think we can move on now. That was 32 years ago. I really, I, I think it's maybe okay to, to have, to, yeah, you know, the, the, anyway. And... I thought it was pretty funny that Woody couldn't control the big fat death, I think it was called the the and I do I I kinda wish that the trailer didn't give away I mean we literally see her save them. She, she in in the trailer. Rosario drives up to them and it's like, You need a ride? Definitely. And then we see her spinning and, and grinding them up with, with the, the giant tires. I get why they put it in there. But the moment that I saw Woody couldn't handle it. Honestly, even before that, I was like, yeah, yeah. they're going to leave. Rosario's going to stay. And later on, she's going to catch up to them in the car. And I also, I had the feeling that Zoe might pop back up. Or when she popped back up, I wasn't hugely surprised. Not only because of the thing with, I had already figured out it was a peanut allergy or something, but, and that's the thing, it's in the trailer, it's not even the same. In the trailer, when they have that thing of, like, everybody thinks this character is going to die first, in the movie, it's it's the group sex or not guy, but in the trailer, it looks like it's Zoe. So I kept expecting her to show back up so they could have that joke. I get why they didn't want to give away, and and it is like if you just 
if you only look at the character, then Zoe looks funnier. And certainly by then, in the trailer, we had seen her say and do funny stuff. It's harder to, to do that kind of... Like... Yeah. It, it's, it's hard. Editing trailers is hard work, and I do not at all envy them. And Zoe pops up, and she misuses the word literally. That was... I, that was really, really funny. That's... Yeah. I literally missed you guys. <laughs> that's... That's... That's very funny. And... Yeah, and we're told Jesse shot over Zoe's head. Which does ultimately make sense. Like, he says... Excuse me. He says he was hoping to scare her away. And if she ran away and she didn't run back, and, and ultimately, if she run, if she turned and ran back and caught up to the car somehow, you know, they could then kill her. That, that wouldn't be a huge deal. It's not like he left the door open and tons of zombies came in, you know. And they, they do the thing that they did in the, excuse me, you know, in both movies, you have this montage, like, Ah, is it Malta? And it, it, yeah, you have this bit where now one of them's driving, cut. Now the another one of them is driving, cut. And another, you know, and they're funny in both. I I do the the fact that in the first one Abigail is sitting there talking to Woody Harrelson about Hannah Montana. That's really funny. Like the 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 age difference, the the difference in like cultural. And the fact that it's the zombie apocalypse and she's still talking about Hannah Montana, that's funny. And I don't... Hannah Montana, that was 2009, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Hannah Montana was either during that time or hadn't ended very long before or something. But anyway, then they do it in this, and Zoe literally falls... Like, she closes her eyes as she's driving, and Emma's like, Dude, just... You know, I... You know... W wake up. And then instead of Zoe being like, oh, sorry, I fell asleep at the wheel. She's like, what? What's what's the... So even when she's awake, she's not looking at the road. That was really funny. And she's like, Did you watch, watch the road. Please don't take your eyes off the road. That was... The fact that they did actually let her... But yeah. And, and in the first, you also have the thing that Abigail is actually driving, you know, they, they let a 12-year-old drive the car, and everyone's like, you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember who says what, but like one of them's like, you know what, 65, you can go 75, and then one, another one, is, you, you could also choose to go less than 20, I don't know, and and just like, and she's like, look, I, this is the first time I'm driving, okay, get off my back of hours, or something like that. And and they re they reach Babylon. And Zoe looks at it and exclaims in delight, Babylon! <laughs> and they have to give up their guns. Even Woody, if you want to see Abigail. I, I have to admit, I do feel like... But that's the thing. They, they wanted to end... They wanted the, the finale without guns. And that's... But it does feel like, I mean, if the other ones went in, would it not? I feel like they could probably convince Abigail to, like, pop her head out and say hi to him without him having to give up. But, I mean, I get it. it's it's the It's supposed to show that the character is that... that even as much as he loves guns, he does love her more. But then it also feels like the, the fact that he goes, like, the, the, ah, what was the word? The fact that he goes, like, you know, he, he leaves immediately. You know, that's, I don't know, anyway. And, and the thing with, like, Yeah, the the thing with you know 
I, I'm afraid I, I don't remember the entire line, but it's something about like, you know, women, women have, have the right to vote. Didn't you hear about women suffering? You mean suffragette? What? <laughs> And we see that Abigail really loves it in Babylon. And Woody turns back because there are a lot of T-800s. And, and the, I have to admit, the, the, these are such simple jokes. They shouldn't, they shouldn't make me laugh this hard, but they do. When, when, you know, these, yeah, these are from two different scenes, but like when Zoe, she's like, you know, yeah, I think, you know, she's like, what was your name again? Tallahassee. Sally Tally. And then they say, oh, look, Salty Taffy's back. And I'm like, Harbor Batteries. That's nothing like what I just said. Now, and I noted here that it has just non-stop jokes, and that Zoe is not the one that is making her sacrifice as such, and even Abigail knows who Bob Dylan is, and I was writing this very quickly, so sometimes I, you know, you know how a, a small b and small d are basically, like, if, you know, if this is the d, then this is the b? I, I I was writing it fast, so it came out Bod Dylan. I don't know. I'm i some people probably blah probably attracted to him. And yeah, I noted here does to to try to figure out does the climax match or excel the first one. I mean, I would say that the first one, it is ultimately a more kind of, there's more emotion to the scene because you have the, the, this whole rescue, you know, you have the, the, what's his face, Jesse going in to rescue Emma, and you have that Emma and Abigail, they basically, they, they threw everything else away because they so badly wanted to, you know, yeah, to, to be in Pacific Playland. And that place blows. In my mind, it's good fun for the whole family. And the, the, what's the, yeah, so the, the, and, and, you know, and Woody, just, dis, he, he distracts the zombies so that, Jesse has a better chance of rescuing them, and I mean, Woody's basically, you know, ultimately he does survive, but he very easily could have ended up dead. And I do still think, I, I get it, but it's just, with the amount of zombies we see, the tiny little amount of clips that he set up really shouldn't have been, I just, I feel like, if you had the scene basically as it is, but then like the the yeah like like Jesse's like, how did you kill so many? You didn't have that many clips, and then like he he looks over in the corner and there's this blood drenched chainsaw or circular saw something. I just feel like there's no way he shot that many with that few bullets, and it it strains. My suspension of disbelief so far that it snaps in half. And I just really, it's, it's one of my, the, the ending of the first movie is, is home to some of the only problems I have with that movie. Anyway, but yeah, you know, it's a big emotional thing. And here, I mean, I guess you have some emotion because Woody came back to, to save Abigail, but yeah, it was fun. It was fun and it was big. Now, let's see. Yeah, and here I noted, you know, Abigail doesn't really get a lot of great punchlines, which the rest of the... Yeah. 
you know, ba basically, yeah, the, the, the rest of the main cast and also the support, the, the new supporting ones. You know, Ber Berkeley, not so much, you know, Berkeley's mostly funny in how much of a stereotype he is. How he's, he's so the antithesis to Woody, and that's the thing, she wants to get away from her father. You know, it, it is that thing, you know, the teenage girl dating the, the boy who's completely unlike her father, kind of thing. And, let's see. Yeah, and they wanted a climax without guns. And I, I like that the, at first, it, it, it held off on the explosion, so we were like, oh no, is it not going to happen? Because I honestly thought that it was going to, like... There, there are things that, uh, like there are certain fuel, no, I'm just, yeah, there, there are some substances that are really great at, you, you can, you can light them on fire very easily, but they don't blow up. And then there are others where if you try to light them, they blow up, but they don't, they, the, the flame isn't going to move anywhere. I thought that maybe it was going to turn out to be one of, you know, that that was going to happen, and they were actually going to have, like, and, and then Jesse's like, oh, I'm an idiot, no, we used this kind of fuel, which only leads the flame, we didn't use this kind of fuel, which explodes, and then, like, Woody being amazing, why don't you go and bash their, their brains in, with your amazing intellect or something like that but and yeah turns out there are a lot of stragglers and yeah trailers gave away that big fat death came back with Rosario and that was the first one there we go I yeah that's the thing I mean I don't it's been a while since I watched the trailers for the first one, but I really don't remember the the actually maybe some of the ending was had been given away. Come to think of it, maybe a little. I'm I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, it's it's too bad that it was here. Now let's see. But yeah, you know, the car spinning, very, very cool. And, and then, you know, the, yeah, I'm, I'm not certain that this, this might have been a note that I didn't get around to writing before now, but the thing with Abigail wanting to leave Babylon really came out of nowhere. And I feel like, again, it just, it feels like lazy writing and they were hoping that people wouldn't really care because it keeps things moving quickly. I get, like, it would be frustrating to have a lot of scenes of them trying to talk her, you know, con convince her to, to leave anyway or something. But I just feel like maybe... I feel like it would have been funnier and better in general if there had been, like, a thing that motivates it instead of just well we've reached this point in the script now this is what I want to happen so characters are just gonna do it. like the the maybe something with the group sex guy like Abigail you know the the Yeah, like like he, you know, you know he he says group sex, uh, no group sex or okay group sex, one too many times, and she just can't with it or something, and yeah, and and yeah, maybe maybe she's like I I I, I can't I can't stand this guy, and then the like the people in charge of Babylon are like well. He's, he's not going anywhere. We, we want to keep him around. And then she's like, 
the the and yeah, and she turns to Berkeley and is like, "I'm going. What about you?" And he's like, "But there's group sex here or so, something, you know." And and Berkeley's throwing things onto the zombies. And and Abigail did have the 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 Ellis Nixon gun and when when the you know Woody's hanging on the thing you know yeah he he jumps onto the thing so that they'll go over and then you know and I do like the thing he sacrificed and we're like he's gonna he's gonna die and and for a second you think that he's gonna just jump over but he, you know, swing, and then it swings back. And, oh, he's gonna die, you know. When when Jesse grabs his foot, I thought he was just gonna pull the shoe, the the boot off, or something like that. And then that would, you know, that that would be. I, I guess this is what Cinema Wings would call a cliche dodge. And you know, pull the boot off by accident, obviously. And and Emma says yes to Jesse and Zoe takes it boringly well. I just feel like you know, and I do also. I I did enjoy the 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 joke about you know I, this this ring and and like ah you got that ring too huh and and the you know and and you know. And and she's like, yeah, yeah, I, I found it in the in the drawer. I think it was the first ladies. You know what? I think it was the first ladies. But then she, you know, and well, maybe the first lady was like, you know, the, this the the bickering kind of thing. I, I again, I just I feel like it would have been funnier if there had actually been like again, I I get it. You know, she she jumps from one guy to another guy and oh actually now that I think about it yeah huh because Jesse really was the first guy that she had any chance yeah she she finds him and even even yeah and when she sees Woody but he's much older but by the time yeah when the the yeah once they get to Babylon she has other guys that she could be with so she doesn't need okay fair enough i i i guess i would have liked to have that like underlined or something like maybe it would have been funny if she already forgot jesse's name or something like you know or, or almost forgot who he is altogether like the the you know that yeah that would play into the dumb blonde stereotype with with the yeah when when the yeah, like like the the when when Emma says yes, you know Jesse could could turn to to Zoe and be like, you know the the like I'm I'm sorry it had to end this way, and she'd be like, who are you again or or something like that, and 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 just be like me I'm and and then he realizes that Zoe is like way more interested in in Berkeley. And yeah, and and then he's like, "I'm the guy who borrowed you that ring. Can I have it back?" It's oh yeah, sure, whatever. And then you know, but yeah. And I have to say the the you know as I was watching the this whole wrap up with everyone, I, I'm I'm sorry, but it felt like something from like 20 years ago or something. It really like. I don't watch that many movies that that like come out today. I, I but we're not still there, are we? This is this is this is supposed to be a joke. That's it's the joke is supposed to be that this is like something from decades ago because it's just yeah, it it feels almost like out of a sitcom or something. It's just it's so yeah. I just, again, I just feel like it would have been interesting, like when the first one ended the way it did. When when you have the 
you know, oh no, they actually, the, the girls are actually going to leave them at Funland, even after they just saved their lives and this whole thing. And then you realize, no, 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 they, they just, they, they made sure to get a Twinkie and they throw it to him. And then they pretend to drive off again, just, just for kicks, and, you know, just for shiggles. I thought that really worked. I, I, I don't know if this was them figuring they couldn't match that, or if this was their attempt at matching that, but when, like, when I first watched the first movie, I was there with Jesse going like, they're going to leave them again. They're going to drive away from the guys again after all of this. And then when they do stop, it's like such a relief, you know. And it is this thing of you kind of do want to see these four people stay together because they do, yeah, you know, they do work together, you know. And... Yeah, it just, in, in this, it just kind of felt like they gave up. Yeah. And the Homer walked past all of them and just fell off the ramp. They didn't even have to, yeah. And then he goes, you know, home is not a place, it's the people you're with. And we have the thing with, you know, the, the, uh, what's it called? Average, you know, yeah, Bill Murray doing press for Garfield 3, Flabby Tabby. I feel like that might be what, like, for people who don't remember, the second Garfield movie was called A Tale of Two Kitties. So Flabby Tabby sounds like what it probably would be called the, the third one. I, I saw in the like the trivia on the the spoilers you know Bill Murray never made Garfield 3 and I'm like um he's not dead don't you mean he hasn't made that movie? like I mean like Elvis Presley never made Jailhouse Rock part 2 or something like that okay he's dead you know that that was a thing. I was like wondering, did does Tallahassee not know that Elvis is already dead? Like, you know, does he think that they're gonna go to Graceland and he's gonna be there? You know. But anyway, and Bill Murray coughing up a hairball, and and we see that Roker. Well, you know, at, at first we think he's the first zombie, but then we see he he's one of the first zombies, but he can't. He must not have been the very first one, right? Because there were a bunch of them right out there. I don't, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Honestly, I, I understand people who hated it. And I understand people who loved it. Personally, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, like, like I already said. I enjoyed it more than the first one. But overall, it isn't quite as good. And... I do find it really funny with all the jokes about hippies and nonviolence in this movie, and then the the end credits actually do say, you know, a greener world and it really matters and this whole thing. It's like it, it just feels kind of antithetical to, to that anyway. And then the post credits, you know, he's he's coughing up a hairball in Spanish, and he's like, oh, pardon my accent. That was pretty funny. And let's see. Yeah, that I already said. This movie has more pop culture references than the first, but then it has more everything than the first. So, you know, there, there are also a lot more zombies dying, a lot more guns fired. You know, so it's it's really not, you know, the cars are bigger and more destructive. So, well, I guess only the, there's, there's the one car that's bigger and more destructive, and it, yeah, so, I, I feel like it, would, it made sense to lean into that, and I don't think that any of it, like, I mean, I don't think people who, people who enjoyed the first one are not gonna, like this more or less based on the fact that they reference Homer Simpson, you know, I, I feel like not, not today, you know, they don't, and they don't specify vintage Homer Simpson. 
By 2009, The Simpsons was already pretty bad. So, I'm not sure. Anyway. And... And, I, yeah, I, I was thinking, like, oh, you know, Babylon is going to be, oh, it's this pathetic place of this, you know, the, these hippies who can't solve their own problems. But then Woody's actually the only, Tallahassee's literally the only character who doesn't like Babylon. Like, Jesse doesn't understand Hacky Sack, but he seems to like it there. Abigail likes it there until they decide randomly that she doesn't anymore. Yeah, really... And, let's see, yeah, and, and the new characters, they're in it very little, but that, you know, there are a lot of zombie movies where someone who seems like they might be a main character, or maybe they were a main character at that point, they die. They turn and or they die. So that felt, that made a lot of sense in this, is, you know. I, I will say it was pretty, it became obvious quickly that they were, that the new characters were going to be the ones to die, but then there's a lot of, we, we keep fearing that Abigail, or you know, we keep fearing that zombies are going to catch up to Abigail and kill Berkeley, but he never gets hurt at all, and you have, the um, and Rosario never gets hurt either, so... And Zoe does survive the entire movie, ultimately, so, yeah. I feel like the, the thing with the zombie types, they didn't really use them very much. I, I mean, obviously they needed the whole T-800 thing for the ending, but that's basically it. And honestly, you know, yeah, there, there are four types of zombies in this. There are the, the Homers, the, the Hawkings, the Ninjas, and the T-800s. The the zombies in the first movie, none, you know, yeah, the, I, is there one or two that are, like, stupid? I, I don't think so. In the first one, they're just, they're typical zombies. I just feel like it's weird to say we've now decided that we've now, we've now discovered there are three types of zombies. And for it to be that those three zombies are not the types we've seen before it's just I don't, I don't know it just it i feel like it would have been it would it would have been extremely easy for them to just say they're the kind we already know about and you know just want to give them some meaningless meaningless name and then there's these three other types but the the ones in the first one yeah now and the the thing with you know whom is the people you're with first of all i don't know if that's a very 2009 kind of thing to say but it's definitely not a new like it it, it kind of acts like it's breaking new ground and again with the first one when you yeah the the that bit at the end with you know we kind of hope that these four will stay together i didn't really see that coming like early in the film, I wouldn't have guessed that. It's especially considering the way they meet. You know, literally the first time the the girls meet the guys, you know, immediately like Jesse's like, oh, she's cute, and then he's like, oh, but her sister has to die. But then within minutes, they steal all their all their guns and ammo, the keys to the car, and the next time they meet they try to do the same thing again you know that this whole you know so so yeah at the end of the first movie when you see them seemingly drive off and leave the guys again you think that it's you think they're really doing it and when they stop you're relieved and you're like they they should stay together because they're good together even if you know they they argue and such but they are they they make a good surrogate family and in this one, it's like, they couldn't really think of anything new. And it, and it also, like, where or what is home was never really a conflict in this film. Like, I don't, they never, they never said, like, oh, it's going to be impossible to get back to the White House from here. 
where are we gonna live now? No, they just, like, yeah. I mean, I guess it would, it would at least be one thing if they were, like, the, the, if, if Woody kept, if, if Woody was still complaining about the car they were driving in, and then it was like, but you know what, it's okay as long as the, the people in the car with me are you guys, or something like that. And I do also, you know, it's nice that he got to drive Elvis's car there at the end. I feel like they, they managed to keep Zoe's jokes, they, they were always changing so they didn't get old. You know, you, you have her, like, loving the, the rules, you have her thinking that Woody is way older and more helpless than he is. The, the, you have her not getting that the, the, that, that Emma is jealous of her and, and, you know, and, and then you have her being, like, annoyed with the sarcasm, and then she returns the sarcasm, and you have the, the joke of, is she turning, and turns out she did drive the, the clown car, which also, again, that, it was set up, you know, the clown car was there, Jesse wasn't getting into it, you know, but it was very close to where they, yeah, where they parked to, to get her out of the car. And, let's see, and I guess, yeah, and then you have her mispronouncing words, and the, yeah, I, I felt like they did a really good, if they make, like, a spin-off where, honestly, any one of these characters, I'd watch a spin-off of them. And, yeah, and, you know, the, the climax is in part, they, they wanted to make sure it was, like, the first one, so they're stuck in a place where they can't just drive away, and they, you know, the, the, the girls run out of ammunition, so they can't just keep, yeah, and, yeah, so I wrote to consider, is it less stupid and frustrating than the climax of the first one. I guess ultimately, I mean, the th it's just the thing of like, oh, they're melting down guns to, to make these peace medallions. And like, you know, it's, it, they, they actually, I'm not 100% certain if they did do it, but I, I believe that was something that like hippies wanted to do. Melt, excuse me, melt down guns, excuse me, and just make, yeah, make, make them into peace sign medallions or whatever. Yeah, the, the anti-new, whatever. And, you know, the joke is supposed to be they're still doing that even in, in this world where it's extremely necessary to be ready to use violence. And, yeah, it just... And then also they, they're like, oh, but, you know... The, the hippies don't realize that if you fire fireworks into the air, that attracts the T-800s. I mean, I get that the T-800s are very new, but it's just... I just feel like it's... it's It goes too... Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, you know what? I think would have been kind of funny if the way they kept them away was by smoking a crazy amount of weed, and the weed smoke like, confuses the zombies, and so they don't attack, or something like that, but it doesn't work on the T-800s, but it's like, the zombies from the first movie would have annihilated these guys, you know, you don't need the T-800 zombies to be the ones to, yeah, and I think that was everything that I wrote down on, okay, Now, that brings us to section number two. Notes taken before watching. Now, I have watched George Romero, rest in peace, Night of the Living Dead films, other than Survival of the Dead, which I haven't watched at all, 
many, many times, especially the original trilogy, which I rewatched just in recent weeks. And I've also watched the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead remake, and both 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later countless times, and at least once relatively recently. The last time I rewatched the 28, the, those two movies, just a couple of weeks ago. Love those movies, and I think I am planning to eventually get to doing vlogs on them, but it's a crazy long list. Now, I watched the original Zombieland movie four times by now. You know, f first back when it hit theaters, then for when Venom hit theaters, and then a few weeks ago, and then yesterday. I, originally, I was gonna just stick to, well, I watched it a few weeks ago, but then I was like, I can watch it again, so I did. And... And if you have checked, you are correct. I have not done a video on the first Zombieland. I, I probably will at some point. I just... The thing was that when I... It's not that I didn't do vlogs back when the first one came out. It was that back then I didn't do vlogs for every movie I watched in theaters. This was one of the only movies that I didn't do a vlog on. And then eventually I just decided I'm just, I'm just going to do a video on every time I watch a movie in the theater. Now, and which which before the you know once the MCU started putting out three movies in a year, it was like okay I don't think I'm going to watch much else. But you know for a while I also watched other kinds of movies, and eventually I probably will start watching other recent movies than comic book adaptations but again like just this year this year there were three MCU movies then there's this and there's Terminator 6 that's five movies in a year which for me is a lot for for movie theater going you know now let's see right so, there is something called the Zombieland 2 featurette trailer. And, let's see. Yeah, the, the, I'm not going to comment on too much of it, but apparently... Thomas Middleditch was like, and they said, didn't you know you're a poor man's Jesse Eisenberg? And I said, what? Does that mean that Luke Wilson is the poor man's Woody Harrelson? I'm not going to lie. I've known that the Wilson brothers were hilarious for a lot longer than I've known that Woody Harrelson was. I have no idea if I did or did not watch Cheers. I have no recollection of it, but then there are a bunch of things that I apparently watched when I was a kid that I don't remember. It doesn't mean I didn't think it was good. But I mean, comparatively, I, I'm I 100% certain I watched Frasier, so, you know, and, and wasn't Frasier on Cheers? I'm not sure that the people, the actors on Cheers really meant that much to, to me in, yeah. The, the guy who played the head guy, he also played like a therapist, possibly in more than one show, where he was very snarky. I watched a little bit of that, thought that was pretty funny. I don't have any problem with any of them. It's just, they're not really, yeah. I mean, Cheers, I'm not sure it was my kind of sitcom. Like I said, you know, Married to Children is more my kind of thing. And I I feel like Cheers wasn't as raunchy. Was it on at the same time? Or, or some, I, f I feel like it was. And it was just, it was a different kind, yeah. And, and Zoe George says, a beam of light in a world of darkness is the non-judgmental way of describing her. Which is, like, actually, now that I think about it, that is, like, that is almost like if, if Zoe, if, if, sorry, if Madison was a lot smarter, that is probably what she would say. So she is kind of channeling her character there, but I don't know. And, and yeah, I feel like I've seen, like... Was was Zoe was she the lead in that movie that 
that that uh, Groundhog Day type movie that that they reviewed on I Fall Down or whatever it was called. They reviewed on midnight screenings. So that's yeah. I'm I'm I feel like I saw a clip of that. But anyway. And let's see. Yes, and then there's the Red Band trailer number two. And and this is when you know that you know the the almost immediately in the trailer, you can tell okay this this is the Deadpool writers, because they use Backstreet's Back by the Backstreet Boys instead of anything else as as we see them walking towards the White House you know, and I I do really like that the White House. You know, you see that that has clearly not been like painted or anything in the ten years since the zombie apocalypse started, which makes sense, you know. And I mean, it did make me wonder if, like, you know, what what about the government? Of, of course, there's a government. There's always a government. They're in like a bunker or a plane. And let's see. Yeah, and the trailer calls them a dysfunctional family, and I was wondering. And I wrote to note if the movie uses that well, I would say they do. And let's see. Yeah, and, and the thing with, you know, Jesse almost shoots Zoe and she's, please forgive me, it's fake fur. That's pretty funny. That's like she asked. She legitimately believes that that's why she's being shot at. She's encountered someone who would kill someone on sight for wearing real fur. That's like it's it's not that there are tons of zombies around. Yeah, yeah. and and they use shoot to thrill in in the trailer and. Yeah, I mean, Tony Stark hasn't used that since 2012 in the first Avengers movie, I'm fairly certain. So, I, I, I'm I, going to allow that. I'll, I'll, don't just, you know, don't steal too much of his music. You know, like, if they had gone after, like, Back in Black, that was used... In Far From Home. So that, but anyway. And. Yeah. And then they have the thing with, you know, Bill Murray. <sighs> okay, they're not even pretending that Bill Murray hasn't clearly aged 10 years in the 10 years that passed between these two movies coming out. And I was wondering if this was going to be like someone's dream sequence or if he's somehow still alive after the events of the first one. But then how is he on TV if it's 10 years after the first one? I don't think Emma Stone is the only one hallucinating. I, I really, like, considering that ultimately he does have a bit of screen time, you know, once the, the whole, in the, in the post-credits, once he's, like, going around attacking zombies. So I get why they did... Excellent. I mean, comparatively... Like, a, an MCU movie would have used de-aging. I don't know if the if the budget for this is hugely different. I, I could imagine that this doesn't have the budget of that. Or that too much of it is spent just bringing the four leads back. But I, I feel like the... the Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I get it. They wanted to recapture that magic, but I'm sorry. Even, uh, I, I feel like it's extremely easy to tell that he's aged 10 years when you look at that and compare it to the, his, his scenes in the 2009 movie. Yeah, anyway. And 
I like that, you know, when, when they're all certain that she's, you know, yeah, in the trailer it's silly. They're all certain that she's going to die. And then Jesse's like, thank you for your sacrifice. Like, say someone in the military. And let's see. Oh, right. Even the, even the jump when they, in the, in the monster truck, when they, and, and land, you know, now the, the, the spin was given away, but also the, the jump and the, yeah, it, it, it gave away too much of that. And that's the thing. I mean, ultimately, there are not that many. I mean, they give away parts of almost every action scene, don't they? Pretty much, other other than the the short establishing cuts in at the very start with the yeah the the cutaway gags really the those are the only ones that aren't at all. Yeah. Anyway. And the, yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm missing something really obvious, but there's that, you know, in, in the trailer, and it's not in the movie, but there's this thing about, you know, Emma says, I think those cigars are left over from the Clinton administration. And then, you know, he eventually comes back to, eh, whatever. But at first he's like, eh, I guess he doesn't find you know, Monica Lewinsky attractive the way she looked back then, or does he not go down on women? I, I don't really get, I mean, it's not as though Clinton didn't smoke those because then they wouldn't be whole in the cigar box. So it's not like he, he would be kissing Bill Clinton. So I, yeah, I, I don't get it. I mean, I guess you could make us, you know, oh, but it's so long ago. Yeah, exactly. It's probably, if, you know, whatever there used to be of her on the surface of those cigars has probably, is probably not there anymore. You know, it's not like they were in a freezer or something or in a regular cigar box. Anyway. I apologize for getting mildly graphic, but the joke in the trailer is graphic, so. And, you know, and it points out, you know, the cast are, like, all award nominees, and then, like, was it was it maybe Emma who also won one? I don't pay attention to award ceremonies. You know, I'm not sure they had those award nominations or wins in 2009, so that's an interesting way to, like, I, I, guess, I guess that's part of the joke, isn't it? Because it's like, people who watch this are people who love the one from 2009. So we're not coming back because of, oh, remember that award-winning performance that, you know, like, Emma Stone wasn't a celebrity in 2009, was she? She had been like, she, she had been, they, they talk about on the, on the commentary track for the first one, they talk about how she had been in Superbad, but that was more or less it. You know, today she's. You know, I, I don't pay attention, but I I'm not blind. You know, I, I realize she's. Yeah, she's. I I think she's won at least once, and she's certainly been nominated. She's taken roles that are, you know, Oscar baby and, and such. It, and been in movies that are Oscar baby, maybe more so than roles. You know, La La Land was pretty. It was like made for. The Academy, I'm, I'm fairly certain. And yeah, but the the yeah, I, it's it's a cute joke to see you know as as if someone who hasn't already watched the first one is gonna watch the trailer for this and be like, oh, they are award nominees. I have to watch this movie then. You know the the yeah. Anyway, and, and at one point in the trailer, you know, Luke Wilson says, Time to nut up or shut up is very 2009, so they're making fun of their own tagline from the first movie. Meanwhile, that's saying, excuse me, saying that's very 2009 kind of implies that, excuse me, pop culture has moved on, which, how, how could it possibly, given that all America are zombies are now, but I guess that's part of the joke. And... I watched Zombieland is a deeper dumb wisecrack edition. It's it's a fine enough video. 
And I mean, they do admit at the start of the video they might be way overthinking the movie. But yeah, they point out you know they they point out similarities between the movie, the first movie, yeah, the movie and a western. I do think I I very much like that in the first movie when Tallahassee and Columbus, Columbus, whatever, when the two of them meet. It's like a standoff in a western, like they're pointing their guns at each other. You get, you know, you get the close up. And then you see them from afar, and you see how far they are from each other, and and it you know and it holds on the tension, and it doesn't feel like a very two thousand nine scene. It feels like a classic western scene, you know, like if Sergio Leone had directed Zombieland, that sequence would have looked like exactly the same. And. And I watched Top 10 Things to Remember Before Zombieland 2. And I don't really... Yeah, I don't really have anything to add to it. And the IMDb trailer, I don't know what happened. I'm almost certain that Watch Mojo didn't put up this version of the trailer. I... I don't know why, because it is, in, in a lot of ways, it's better than the the trailer that, you know, I, yeah, anyway, the, yeah, when, when the, when they approach the White House, it's like gangster rap, and we see the Ma Madison thinks Tallahassee is Columbus's father, shoots a fair lady, CPT plays, and the trailer actually shows Berkeley claim you know, do I look like someone who has weed before he presents the bag? Which makes an awful lot more sense than the other one. Here's actually a joke. Like, in, in the other trailer, it's like, you don't, do you have weed? Boom. And then in this, it's like, do I look like the type of person who would have weed? You know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm sorry. Boom. Just, you know, that's, that's actually a joke. And I had honestly completely forgotten until recently rewatching in the first movie, the characters do at one point smoke weed. That's how bland the weed jokes in the first movie were for me. I mean, I understand why it's funny that they're reenacting Ghostbusters, but they need to be on weed to do that? You meet Bill Murray in person, and it takes weed for you to reenact the Ghostbusters? I just... I. I don't know. I get maybe they felt like it was too far. Maybe there isn't actually a weed joke, and it's just that those two scenes happen one right after the other or something. Anyway, maybe at some point someone will explain to me why it's funny that weed exists and that some people smoke it. I'm not saying it can't be funny, but it's not funny just to see someone smoke it. I mean, it can't possibly just be that you're breaking some rules, right? It's not the equivalent of a kindergartner saying poop or something. And and Thomas Middleton goes, I think you double parked, or more perpendicular part. That's funny. And Emma Stone says, what is going on here? Am I hallucinating? And... And then there's this Watch Mojo video, the Zombieland double tap cast interview, and Breslin says she likes Watch Mojo. I watch Mojo. I it, it was too bad it didn't it it didn't go quite as far as like when the Far From Home cast. They were all like, "Oh, I love your top tens," and and I like the the Re Rebecca is that her name? The Watch Mojo lady almost got like embarrassed. She's like, "Okay, okay, calm calm down, please." You know, I'm just doing my job here. It's, uh, you know. And Rosetta Dawson has a lot of flavored snacks. And Emma would have said her number one would be boat, but rule would be to get boat, but then Woody Harrelson stepped on her line. And she either is upset or pretends to be upset. And then I watched the midnight screenings of Zombieland Double Tap. And I did not take any notes for that one, but I, it was it was a good video, and they 
you know, they also pointed out, you know, wait, was Al Roker patient zero or was, anyway. Now, in In Search of Zombieland, featurette on the DVD of the first movie, they talk about that Abigail really badly wanted to get to play a zombie, to turn into a zombie at the end of the movie because the zombie makeup looks so fun that she was limited to vi living vicariously s through the zombified actors. And I was wondering if she would get to play a zombie in this, maybe just in a dream sequence or something. She doesn't. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I get, I feel like it would have been super easy. Like... Just have, you know, yeah, have the, the, let's see, have, have Emma find Abigail and she's become a zombie because Berkeley couldn't protect her and she like comes at an attack or it could be Woody having, you know, comes at and attacks and then, you know, wake up. It's just, it was just a nightmare. You know, but anyway, and and in the in the featurette for Amber Heard is just so so fun in in that whole like she 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 goes around like at one point she like pretends to be like Miss Zombie America yeah Miss Zombieland or something like that like a, a, a you know pad, beauty pageant winner. And she's like, I, I intend to promote dental hygiene. And, you know, it's just, yeah, it's really, really fun. She's, yeah. The, the, let's see. And I guess. And that was also the, the you know, Emma and Abby, Abigail both, you know, see her as she's having the makeup put on. And, like... I, th I think they really felt her pain because, you know, they, will, they they know what it's like to have makeup, to have someone else put makeup on you, but then to also have to do it like that, you know, yeah. Honestly, I, w I wouldn't have minded, like, a post-credits bit where all of them are zombies and it turns out to be a nightmare or something, and, like... Maybe there's maybe in their zombie forms they behave in ways similar to what they were like in real life or something. I don't know. It's possible it's only Abigail who had that dream, but yeah, she 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 was very adamant in in the. But but again, yeah, ten years passed. Maybe she doesn't. Let's see. Now, in the first movie, a lot of fun comes from the characters and their interactions and the on-screen comic book-like graphics. And, yeah, that's still very much the case. Now, a lot of people today, a lot of people complained that today the only movies getting made are remakes and sequels and such. Meanwhile, we're also getting sequels that people have wanted for a very long time. And, again, some people felt like this didn't live up to... You know, some people found this wasn't sad, satisfying. I will say, if this movie, if, if you know, it wouldn't necessarily have been the exact same movie, but if more or less this movie had come out eight years ago or something, that might have been a more, you know, it, it really is. Like, I don't think there are very many people who watch this who weren't, in love with the first movie when it came out in 2009. Like, if you don't know the first movie and you see the trailer for this, I really don't think it's going to appeal to you that much. I mean, I'm sure there are some people, but a lot of the appeal is that, you know, that, that's why they use the Backstreet Boys song. Like, for those who don't remember the lyrics, and I... I only remember the lyrics because they're in the trailer. The lyrics that for the part they use in the trailer is, Oh my God, we're back again. And also by using that song, you know, which, which is from like 90 something, they are, you know, they are making fun of how long it's taken to come back again, you know, by using such a ridiculous thing. I mean, you know, meanwhile, the the I forget when it's from, but in the the trailers for I don't think it appears in the actual movie, which is too bad. But in the trailer for Deadpool 2, they use that 
rap where it goes like, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. And I, I don't remember when that's from, but I'm almost certain it's much more recent than in the mid 90s. So, you know, but I think, I think it was worth making the movie. Honestly, even if, if, if nothing, I do think there's a lot else, but even if there was nothing else good about this movie, just for Zoe's role and performance and jokes and just honestly, yeah. And, and seeing the, the four of them reunited, it really, it's too bad that Abigail is away from the rest of them for so much of it. But the three of them do play off each other really well. And adding Zoe as this, like, yeah, you know, and yeah. So, let's see. But yeah, you know, yeah, so the question was, does this live up to the hype that it has on account of people having to wait 10 years for it? I think that depends, you know, some, some people, I'm not saying you're wrong if you don't think this is a worthy follow-up. I mean, honestly, I've only known that this movie was going to happen for maybe half a year. So it's not like I was going around... I honestly, I was very surprised to find, well, surprised. <sighs> Everything's getting a sequel now, so I'm not really surprised as such. But uh, I hadn't expected it until very recently. Let's go with that. You know, it wasn't something, I wasn't sitting around frantically checking for, for updates on whether this, whether or not this was going to happen. Anyway. So in the first one, the two girls are almost tricking the two guys, the one in the bad situation. Does this do that? And part of it is seeing the trailer, Abigail went out telling anyone running off with a bad boy boyfriend she just met, but is in love with who has weed, like teen girls do, and to the full extent. I mean, ultimately, the... Yeah, there's not really a lot of, like, like new characters will show up in the movie, but it's not really the way. That is something, you know, the first one, especially the first time you watch it, it really is. You do not expect these two con women, and you certainly don't expect them to be so, you know, the first time you see them, you have no idea that, that, that they're conning these two guys. And it's... It remains surprising that they keep screwing them over. And yeah, the you know, obviously they couldn't do that exact same thing again here. And it's not what they wanted to do. They wanted to have the you know, a lot of this movie is the three of them going, you know, in, in the car and going from place to place and, and such. Now I have to say, I, I really, I hope that Abigail Breslin herself is happy with her not getting to, to be funny that much in this, because she was incredibly funny in the first one. The, the, yeah, you know, the, the, I, I feel bad for her not getting to do the funny, because she clearly is still good at being funny when she's, when she gets to be funny in this, she is funny. So, yeah. I don't know. I There's a chance that she straight up just asked, you know, please lighten the load for me and, and you know, put it on some of the others or something. Now, and I was wondering if this would have room for all the new characters. And if any characters in the world get lost in the shuffle of zombies... I mean, it's it's crazy that it works. It shouldn't work, but it kind of does. But, it, I mean, ultimately, yeah, the, the, a lot of the new characters are really only very briefly featured, but it does kind of work. You know, it, it, it's, like with, it's like with Portal 2. Of course there's going to be something other than the core there. 
In the first Zombieland movie, you only have those four characters. You know, there's there aren't really any other characters, and any other character is only seen like in one scene or something. And in the first Portal game, it's literally only the, the teleporting you can do. But then with the second one, you're gonna have new stuff, even if it feels like well, part of what made the first one so great was the simplicity and the limit. But yeah, I mean the excuse me. Basically, the new characters in this tend to get one scene. I mean, honestly, Zoe spends so much time with them, she almost takes over. She is she is essentially keeping Abigail's seat warm for almost the entire movie. And, yeah, then you have the, you know, Thomas and Luke, who, the, the... Yeah, like the, the, ah, what's the word? Yeah, they, they really only have the one scene. They show up, they, you know, they, the, they, they try to outdo each other. Then the, then they turn into zombies and the others have to kill them. And then Rosario Dawson is in these, couple of scenes and then shows up at the end again now in the first movie yeah it's set just a few months after the zombies started taking over so there are errors with not very many zombies oh. there it is and this movie is set 10 years later so presumably there are way more zombies I mean, this one still does have, yeah, there, there are chunks of, of, I mean, I would say this movie has, the there is a, like the, the, in the first movie, if there's like a huge mass of zombies, it's because they they're in a certain area and they get attracted by you know something something shiny or something loud or both and in this i mean i guess you could say that you know that's more or less the case in both of them but in the first one there at the end it really is only this one area full of zombies it's yeah. It's this one area that where where they attract all of these, and then you have the let's see. Ah, let me think. Yeah, you know, in 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 this, it's it's a way bigger area. They come from way further away. You know, it's it's so they're so far away that Tallahassee gets in the car, drives far away, sees the zombies, turns around, drives all the way back, and gets there before before the zombies do. So the yeah, it's it's um the and and it's a bigger horde of zombies than the first one. So. Yeah. Now, and the tone is very similar to that of the first. And I'm not the only one to point this out, but zombie movies are not that big of a thing in movies today. And that is, of course, a consequence of the sequel coming out a full 10 years after the original. The heyday of the genre may be over. And that's, yeah. And, and that's where, I, I haven't watched The Incredibles movies yet, but I probably will at some point. The thing was that the first one almost kind of beat the, excuse me, the first Incredibles movie, 2004. I mean, there was some, like, superhero movie boom. It, it, was, it was starting. There, was, there were definitely some big ones happening. But it was kind of before it hugely took off. And then the second one came out, I want to say, last year, 2018, which was when it was in full force. So that that's where it makes a lot of sense. 
And in the first movie, the climax is fun, but it is pretty stupid of these two other guys. Very smart characters to turn all these loud, right things on when they know it will attract zombies. And yeah, you know, this, this one has a little bit of the same thing, although the people doing the bright, noisy thing, you know, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, are we supposed to think that these hippies don't even know that the zombies are... I mean, they, they have, like, you can't get in without being let in. So they know there are zombies, but they also fire off... I just, it, it doesn't really make sense. I feel like the, the whole thing they did with the hippies, it's just, it push they push it a little too far. And on the commentary track, the director or the writer does admit he didn't do well enough on motivating the girls for the for setting off all these bright and loud things. And see, I don't think it. I think it could have worked. I think what they should have had was that they. You know, I I think I wrote it down. I think I wrote down what I was going to say. So instead of me trying to remember it. Now, in the first movie, the two girls are both con artists, and they work work together incredibly well. Now, it's been ten years, which sure we haven't had to con anyone in all that time. Are they still doing it without practice, maybe, or some training? Not really, no. And it's stylized, like the first one, and new rules for surviving Zombieland. I I thought that was a great... Instead of having... A bunch of, like I, I think there's maybe one or two new ones for Jesse. I feel like the at least some of the ones we hear him saying this one weren't. But anyway, the the yeah, with the first yeah, with the addition of Thomas Middleditch, you know the the yeah, I thought that made a lot of sense, and I kind of like when when he says you know a zipper. I kind of try to avoid branded things, you know. That that's, does sound like something that Jesse would say. You know, Jesse, who's afraid of those things, they wipe tables off in, re in restaurants and such in the first movie. So, yeah. And I, I really like the thing with, you know, no, we're not taking the clown car. Clowns, no. You know, and then later when we see the clown car driving, we know that has to be Madison. You know, the, the, they draw attention to the clown car, and then the, the yeah, that was great. And first movie has Jesse end up with Emma. They kiss. She's trusting him with her first name. And, yeah, and that was the, in, in this one, yeah, from the trailer, I didn't realize that they had been apart for a month. So, yeah. But the... Yeah, she's jealous. I've seen the trailer. He teaches her at least some of the rules, and she feels bad for not following them. So maybe there's some connection. Maybe he really wants to protect her, which is not something that Emma Stone would be into. And let's see. Yeah, in the first one, the there's the pining for the past with Woody wanting a Twinkie, everyone wanting to go to the amusement park. And then this one has the Elvis thing. And the first one has awesome music. This one does as well. And both movies are part comedy and part horror. And use zombies since it's easy for zombies to be scary and or funny. And use that as well. And let's see. Yeah, I already talked about how the you know the fake out and think the girls are gonna leave. And let's see. In the first movie, we learn about 37 minutes in, so a little, so a little under halfway through. Columbus, is, which is where Jess was headed, was been burnt to the ground, so his family's dead. And the first movie points out technically they're not the yeah the infected. Are yeah, they're, they're infected with a version of mad cow disease. They're not actually like already yeah, 
the zombies are not technically already dead. And yeah, this movie doesn't run pretty fast. And You know, when, when you watch 28 Weeks Later, right after 28 Days Later, I mean, maybe it's also just that they, in the first one, they couldn't really afford to do so many of those effects. But in the first one, they don't really seem to, like, they might bite victims, but they don't seem to be interested in eating victims, which in the second one, some of the time, they kind of seem like, you know, they, they, they might bite, but other than, you know, they, they'll, they'll vomit up blood and, and spit and such. And they'll try to, like, grab at you, but they don't really, like, straight up eat the, the, the victims. So, anyway. And the first movie has a lot of slow-mo sequences of Carnage. This one does have some as well. And the first movie has the Bill and Mary cameo. So this has something similar. On IMDb fellow Ghostbuster Dan Aykroyd is listed as being in it. I hope that's not a huge spoiler, and yeah, it turns out he's he's nowhere in it, so I guess that part got cut or something. Maybe replaced by Bill Murray. And the first one, Jesse narrates a lot. And there are a lot of very brief sequences that illustrate Jesse Eisenberg's rules and the like. And yeah, this this one has a bunch of those as well. And first one, all four main characters have a heart, even though Yeah, even even though Emma and Abigail are somewhat hardened. And yeah, I would say in this as well. And in the first one, Jesse is a bit of a soft character, and I was wondering if he's been hardened in the ten years. And you know, it, it, it is easier to make assholes funny than more sympathetic characters funny. I'm, I'm glad that they didn't. I It would have been extremely, excuse me, extremely easy for them to have him be just a, you know, yeah, he, he could have been throwing his relationship with Zoe in Emma's face, like constantly, when really, I mean, you know, I say they bicker, they do literally both bicker. It's not just that she's like trying to bicker but he's not really responding. He's bickering right back. You know, the the thing with you know, she's like, oh, you know, that was the first lady's ring and then he's like, yeah, it was the first lady's ring. Now Yeah, so, you know, in the first one it had only been zombie apocalypse for a short time, maybe months. And now it's been 10 years. Where are they getting food, clean water, other necessities, you know, medication? Just, you can't tell me that in 10 years, not one of them ran into a problem that needed, like, proper medication. As Like, this is, this is, excuse me. Yeah, the, the. This is this is not really a problem that you see in the trilogy of the dead, for example, because those are separate characters in separate locations. You know, I mean, they're they're in America, but they're not the the same. So it it is like, and and I guess I shouldn't say more because it would spoil, but. I, I do think that doesn't really make sense. But like I said earlier, I feel like they acknowledge that it doesn't make sense by saying, oh yeah, the, the power is still on in this mall. And the first one, the rules appear on screen among us graphics, and they do excuse me, in the second one as well. In the Drawfee video, drawing more randomly generated D&D characters, they're talking about the past, and Julia says, I had an older brother. Had, not have. Julia, did you trap your older brother in one of those horrifying paintings? Was he turned into a stuffed animal like Adler was? And let's see. yeah, and in the first one, there was some place in the murder that had a few, even zero zombies, and I was wondering if that happens in this. 
has been 10 years, so it makes sense they were able to spread all over the country. And I kind of looked over that. And yeah, and the first one, you know, if, if you're smashing something, if there's blood and or guts, that's like, you know, yeah, that's that's a big part of the the humor in those and I guess not as much the smashing things I guess but there is still a lot of yeah I have to say I really feel like the on this movie it would have been it could so easily have turned out to be I'm I'm really glad that this wasn't just like constant like action movie like like, if this had turned out to be, like, Mad Max Fury Road, but in Zombieland, oh, that would not have fit with the first movie at all. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that that's not a great movie. I just, that wouldn't have fit, you know. Or, yeah, for example, or let's let's say that suddenly it was, like, Blade Runner pacing or something. No, they they got the same pacing as the first one. And the, the, a lot of stuff has been made bigger, but it doesn't, like, yeah, I feel like they did a really good job. Final section. Which is called Buying Time. IMDb, Wikipedia, and Critics Sites. Excuse me. Now, right, and it has a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes and a consensus. Zombie Dance Double Tap makes up for a lack of fresh brands with an enjoyable reunion that recaptures the spirit of the original and adds a few fun twists. I would have to agree. And it has an 89% audience score with 5,944 verified ratings. Now, currently, the yeah, the, the the reviewer count 192 total reviews, and 130 of them are fresh. And the average audience rating was 4.37. Now, Okay, so right, and these are the Rotten Tomatoes critic reviews. With very little go on, director Ruben Fleischer obligingly keeps the intricately choreographed fight scenes coming at a snappy pace, along with the jokes and cultural references with Elvis Presley featuring heavily. And yeah, it it's. That that is the thing. Uh, ultimately, the the it it moves faster than the first one, so there's room for more stuff because they know that if you if it was literally the same thing, if they didn't make it bigger, then it wouldn't be satisfying. And yeah. It may not be the Godfather Part Two. But on its own terms, it's a worthy follow-up. When you have to say, well, it's not, you know, you might as well have said it's not Shakespeare, but it's not supposed to be. Just, that's, it's, 
what was that stamming faint praise I think is the term and It's as if the filmmakers are so embarrassed by their own derivative material that they're trying to hide it with a veneer of thickness rather than finding ways to revitalize it. I don't necessarily agree, but I can see what they mean by that. And There are some funny lines and a smattering of semi-clever plot twists, but mostly the movie is stale and sloppy. Again, I, I see what they mean by that. And... And this guy says, I, it doesn't feel fresh anymore, however, I do appreciate that the cast is still having fun. I definitely say, I, I really feel bad for Evelyn Breslin that she got sidelined for so much of it. Because for so much of it, she's just reacting to Berkeley. He's the guy who's supposed to be, like, maybe, maybe they could have at least had, like, flashbacks or something. Or someone imagining... Abigail still being around. Something. I, I really feel like. Yeah. You know, having just rewatched 28 Days Later, there's a scene fairly early on where we see someone meeting someone that they weren't sure. Someone goes to, to see someone's family or something, and we're not sure how, you know, how are they going to find them. And there's a, there's a bit there where someone is like, yeah, I think that could have worked for the The movie Road Trip has this, like... I mean, I don't want to give it away, but that's also a movie where someone is trying to get from one place to another to get to someone that they have a personal relationship with and to get to them before a certain thing happens. And that movie also does have, like, uh, I can't, I can't, I refuse to give it away. It's too funny, but... I just feel like you could have had something. Instead, it's just you spend a while seeing her drive towards it, and then she arrives, and then we don't actually see her for a chunk of the movie. She might is there maybe half an hour, forty minutes where she doesn't appear at all, and then the others catch up to her at Babylon, and then the the. Yeah. Yeah, we, we see, oh, she's happy there, but then she wants to leave all of a sudden. I really feel like she got shafted. Hmm. Now, the main issue with Double Tap is that it attempts to lean on jokes and stylistic ticks that haven't felt fresh in almost a decade, trying to resurrect the lightning in a bottle success the first, unfortunately only, of the first, unfortunately, only leads to a just okay second round. And I, I think there's a lot of truth there. That really is, like, this is not a movie that's going to redefine anything. You know, where the first one really was very, yeah. Hmm. Double Tap is nearly as good as, as the original film, but it's not a sequel that's attempting to outdo its roots. <laughs> excuse me. It's a quick-witted expansion. Excuse me. More blood, more character development, and more sentimentality. And I think that that's very true. It, it's, it's very smart about that. And...
absent minds and do their best to energize the dialogue, but still too self-conscious, self-satisfied to be playable. Without Deutsch's idiot shtick, there'd be nothing to laugh at at all. I, I wouldn't go that far, but I do think that hers is probably my personal favorite, at least. And each cast member gets to create their own big laugh, but it's obvious that Harrelson has the most fun and satisfaction being back in this film. It's a thin plot. It's just an excuse to enjoy the company of funny characters, gleefully brought to life by equally likable actors. Excuse me. I just gotta deal with this real quick. And there we go. Okay. This also has some Point. Hit or miss follow that brings back the original cast of post zombie apocalypse survivors just to put them through the same paces as last time. That is definitely, yeah. That's the thing. It's it's not a like compared to the, you know, I yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue the Mad Max metaphor. Fury Road is hugely different from the earlier movies. You know it. Yeah, so so you know this this is not trying to be Fury Road to the first one's you know Mad you know original trilogy Mad Max. This is just trying to be the the yeah. It's less a sequel and more a reunion tour. Content to play the same hits for the most parts, but when original I does strike, it reminds you why people fell in love with the original. And let's see. This yeah, for uh, the excellent cast with great chemistry. Very true. Now funny enough to recommend, but one tap too many. And I do appreciate that the you know I mean, it, it 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 technically is called Zombieland Two, isn't it? Because there is a t when you look at like the poster, there is a two, and then it just says Double Tap. I I appreciate that you know it's named after the the second rule, so and it has double in the title. I I thought that was a, a pretty decent yeah. And yeah, and I saw some some say you know we don't need a third movie. I got, yeah, I'm sorry. That I, I really I really don't think we need another one of these. And I do still think this would have been much more welcome eight years ago or five years ago, but ten years into it is yeah. Now, let's see. The cars are bigger, the guns are bigger, and the zombies are faster and harder to kill. But this is a movie and a genre where being over the top actually works in its favor. And...
while back in 2009, the first Zombieland felt fresh and busy, this attempted iteration comes across as a curiously flat recycling. And let's see. The humor and setup are essentially the same, and it all goes down just as smooth as the original. In terms of the OGs, no one misses a beat. But Zoe Deutsch's hysterically insufferable Madison steals the show. I I would have to agree. I, I really like yeah, it's just so funny. Excuse me. This time around, the comedy focuses on the people and their relationships more. It does on poking fun of the zombies, and that keeps it from being just a rehash and elevates it to being almost as fun as Shaun of the Dead, which misspelled with a W instead of a U. The... I don't know that I'd go... I'm not sure that I would say that, but... Now... I I don't currently have plans to review... What was it called? The... the something trilogy. The, the, you know, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and... Ah... Uh, I'm afraid I simply don't remember the, the title of the third one. It's slickly done, and in Zoe Deutsch, in addition to the original core cast of Woody Harrelson, just as Maria Stone and Edgar Breslin, the film has a shameless scene stealer. Zombie Dam, Zombie Dam, Zombie Land Double Tap, Nuts Up. The movie has crazier action, more outlandish comedy, and a mid credit scene that will go down in the history books. And. <laughs> now Let's see. and yeah and this is you know yeah pleasantly enjoyable little com Comedy, action, drama, romance, film, but occasionally rises above its lowbrow zombie tropes, combined as the family home and reliable friends are often all we need to get by in this mess of world. That is essentially what the first one ends on, stating that, playing that note. So, And yeah, ultimately this one doesn't really go any anywhere new with that. Recent Wernick don't have much to say with their follow-up, which often plays like a series of disconnected sketches occasionally interrupted by zombie attacks. Yeah, that is kind of true. Excuse me. And... Yeah. Totally played for laughs. The film picks up when moderately... From moderately retaining to much better than average, whenever Zoe Deutsch is on screen, then the film soars. I really hope this gives her gets her a lot of additional work because she is on fire in this movie. And like watching a feature length compilation of deleted scenes and subplots that were shot for the original film. Wrote pop culture slurry. This movie, the movie Zippy as it is, houses the kind of misogyny went out of style around the time the first movie came out. Those dynamics feel rotten given how entertaining the rest of the film can be. It feels like watching a lengthy compilation of well scripted cutscenes from zombie video games. But any movie with jokes about David Gray and Portishead is alright by me. I, I like how, you know, Porta Shed, Porta Seed. Now, there's going to be classic com comedic moments involved here, including some mirror character shtick and another outrageous Bill Murray zombie riot. 
I have to say, I found the the Bill Murray. I thought it was much funnier to in this see him, you know, facing like the the start of the zombie it, it, out, outbreak. I guess. I like I said, I found it funny when he was like. When when he and Tallahassee were, were playing Ghostbusters, and Emma Stone just nailed the imitation of that, you know, oh God, oh no, the the chandelier, the the just completely nailed that, yeah. But yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna get too much into it here. I never thought that the the shooting, you know. Bill Murray pretending to be a zombie and like Jesse shooting him. It's just too obvious, you know, like the moment that you see him enter the movie, like, you know, Tallahassee almost kills him. And then, you know, yeah, it's just, it's so obvious. You see it coming from a mile away. It's, it's just, yeah. But the, but, but this seeing him, in, in, yeah, that was really, really funny. And let's see. On the other hand, every minute Woody Harrelson spent making this was a minute I was not closer to having to watch Venom 2. So, thanks. Does he not think that Woody Harrelson is going to make a good carnage? I mean, literally, my only issue is the the age, and I can honestly kind of forgive that because, I mean, it kind of harkens back to the uh, natural born killers, and yes, that was twenty four years ago, but if he still, I mean, in this movie, Woody Harrelson doesn't look like he's like. You know, he still, he clearly still has energy. That would, yeah. There's no way Juliette Lewis is going to play. I'm, I already forgot the, the name, but the, it's, it's not, I'm not that familiar with the, the symbiote, that, that aspect. I, I know Venom, I know Carnage. I don't think we're gonna get maximum carnage, but it would be amazing if we could. Excuse me, but the the girlfriend nerd has talked about. I'm guessing that's not gonna be Juliet Lewis, although that would be awesome. But yeah. Now let's see. Idiotic. Plot twists. I, hmm. I guess maybe they didn't like the climax either, and maybe they thought the thing with Zoe surviving was stupid. Now, Yeah, Zombieland Double Tap suffers from the same problems that's plagued countless comedy sequels over the years. Namely, how do you make something funny by treading over the same ground? And, you know, they're afraid to be daring since it might alienate fans. It, you know, comedy sequels, it's tough. It is really difficult to, yeah. And... So, although I enjoyed Zombieland, I'm ready to jump ship. I have little patience for the series, mean characters, exhausted themes, and irreverent humor. And I can see what he means by that. 
now. A colossal disappointment the premise that has so many new places to go and wastes every chance. I'm not that I I can't I, I always appreciate when you just that that is just tearing it down. To cite Tallahassee's coin flip coin flip nomenclature, if double tap represents everyone's idea of waiting ten years to make sure they got it right, they'd have been better off with shove. I wonder how Double Tap's iffy right-wing streak will go down with modern viewers. At one point, in fact, a gun nut character even yells out, Thank God for the rednecks. Does he not realize that that line was in the first movie, too? I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's it's literally an exact quote. That line, that, yeah, that's in... When I, I read that review before I watched the movie, and I was like, oh, so they quote the first... I just feel like, you know... If I had written that review, I would have pointed out that they reused that line or something, but, yeah. What kind of jokes do you make when you're out of ideas? Why, you go for the easy ones, of course. Tapped out. Just as jokey and just as violent as the first film. Demonstration of having it both ways. It's not entirely clear why a Zombieland sequel was necessary, but everyone looks like they're having fun, and sometimes that's enough. Now. Barely passable and wholly unnecessary. I misspelled passable. For all this snacked on viscera and exploding brains, this low ambition, slightly higher return sequel asks your stomach. It's Muppety Determination to Please is even sort of sweet. Muppety? Muppet Determination to Please? Yeah. It's, I haven't watched the Muppets in a very long time, so I don't... The cinematic equivalent of a Twinkie, the Zombieland 2 Double Tap, is a guilty pleasure that's fun without being particularly good for you. This one's forgotten before it's over. Double tap direct direly needs a better script and funny jokes, not directly. It's because I'm so more yeah, people use the word directly more than direly. Which is too bad. This is a really great cast, but it's just impossible to recapture the antic feel of the first film in a sequel. It is. I mean, I will say, I, I feel like in order to enjoy this movie, you kind of have to just pretend that it's not. It, it really is not as good. But, you know, if you if you just pretend and, and you go with it, then it works. And I think that's the best we can hope for for this kind of sequel. Yeah, Com comedy sequels, yeah. Harrelson and Eisenberg's banter and bickering remain a joy, but there, but there was more fun to be had from the double act of Stone and Breslin, especially with new arrival of Zoe Deutsch in the mix as spin-off disturbing, disturbing Scatterbrain Madison. I agree. And now. Nah. When it comes to zombies, more is more, and there are a few good scenes of gory mayhem in this film. But when it comes to Zombieland movies, more is just tedious. And if nothing else, Double Tap should help raise the public awareness of Zoe Deutsch's greatness, which is reason enough for the film's existence. I guess that was where I got that idea from. 
I mean, even when I was just watching trailers, I it was clear to me that Zoe Deutsch was going to be incredible in this. Now. By the time the film reaches its abrupt conclusion, complete with vast CGI zombie horde, Double Tap has long abandoned any scene, any sense of explicitly needing to exist. Now. Yes. Okay, so I'm, yeah, I'm almost through scrolling through all the, what was it, 190 something. Almost there. Now, the... Yes, here we go. User reviews. I did, like, five pages back in the... You know, almost a week ago. And I haven't looked. So, so these are not the most recent, but, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, see, this guy, I think what he means is, you know, don't, don't waste your time or money. And the, uh, Jesse Eisenberg is like watching a case of hemorrhoids. Does he mean that watching him in, is like feeling hemorrhoids? Or is he saying that it's like, wa like, like, watching, like, anyway. Yeah, he says, don't waste your time or, and I think he means money, and he uses dollar signs, but he uses four dollar signs, which sometimes is used specifically to censor out a swear word. So I guess there's some chance he's saying, don't swear at the screen, it's a waste. And... Let's see... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. No reading any others. Okay, so Metacritic Pro reviews. And let's see.
Okay. And let's see. Okay, and Metacritic user reviews. So let's see. Yeah, this guy says if it wasn't a ten year wait and more of a three year wait, it would have been a bit more forgiving with the score. I mean, really, when you get down to it, you know, the, the first movie, it's, I mean, I guess in the first movie, they're moving in the same direction, but it keeps being different, like, you know, at the first, at, at first, the, the, yeah, you know, again, when, when the, when the boys first meet the girls, the girls takes they they take all their their weapons and the car which Woody was with Tallahassee was really you know yeah he he really loved that car and then the second time they meet they're again about to tr you know they they do trick them and then it seems like excuse me you know and and then excuse me yeah it seems like it's gonna be they're gonna keep you know the girls are gonna hold the the guys hostage but then they you know columbus what's it called this um he he yeah he he gets the situation back in in you know into control and then you know they spend some time together and then we have the then the girls drive off without the guys again and then the guys come save the girls, and then it seems like the girls are driving off yet again. But then you know they're they're actually not. And and then in this, you know, the girls drive off, then one of them comes back, and the entire rest of the movie is just them catching up to the other girl. That really is, yeah. It it's now. Yeah, some people like the movie better than the first one. Like, a lot better than the first one. Let's see. Now. Yeah, see, this, this guy says, you know, the, the magic is missing primarily because the action takes a backseat to relationships, yawn. And I, th I thought that was a good choice, but I definitely it could have, yeah. I mean, ultimately, the first one, it doesn't have that much action, but it feels like it's moving, and it, sorry, it is moving faster. Because the the it's not so much about the the relationships as this one is, yeah. And let's see. And yeah, he thought Tom Smithovich was the only fresh face that adds any fun. And we, of course, have a reviewer whining about the people that didn't like it. Now.
now. So the Some some people on Meta are talking about review bombing. I have no idea what they're talking about. The I I'll grant that the Meta score is not quite as high as the Rotten Tomato score, but I it doesn't at all look like it's being review bombed. Now. And it's kind of funny. One reviewer says, you know, someone is review bombing this movie and the, the new Maleficent movie. And then there's another guy saying, Metacritic needs to be aware that people associated with Jolie's team and fan base are review bombing this film's rating to lower the score since it's the competition. It, yeah, I, I, I feel like it could only be one of those two things. As far as I've, as far as I've seen, the, the, Maleficent 2 is have has a way way lower score, so yeah, it's been a little while since I checked, and I may have only checked Rotten Tomatoes, not Metacritic, but whatever. Yeah, on Rotten Tomatoes, Maleficent 2 is like rotten to the core. I, I last I checked, which was days ago, could be different, but now. And there's one guy that says, hi, I'm not a bot, and I wasn't paid to say this. If you feel the need to say that, moving on to IMDb, I record this on the 26th. The movie does, according to IMDb, it doesn't have a single tagline. Maybe they didn't have any good ideas, maybe they took their own advice and they just couldn't nut up, so they shut up. Now, Woody Harrelson performs Elvis, classic Burning Love during the credits. Jesse Eisenberg said it was very difficult to keep straight face while filming scenes with Zoe Deutsch. I can absolutely imagine that. I, I don't know how you managed at all. Now. Zombie World. That wouldn't have been a bad title for a musical. Now. I mean, I guess this is the... Yeah, as, as far as, like, like I said, the... I started doing vlogs in late 2009, so this movie, as like a direct sequel, you know, direct but belated sequel, this is the, the, yeah, like first, you know, the M MCU, it's, it's not quite the, the same, so with this, it's the first sequel to a movie that I watched in theaters after I started vlogging. That, that's, yeah. Yeah, never mind. I don't think. I, I may have had so much candy that my brain has started to slow back down from the sugar high. And not everything I say is going to make sense. Yeah, as of 2015, all four leads in this have been nominated for Academy Awards for their performance in other films. In 2017, Emma Stone became the first to win an Oscar for La La Land. I haven't watched La La Land. I have no intention of watching La La Land. I thoroughly enjoyed, I want to say Renegade Cut was the one who tore that film to pieces. That was fun to watch.
and this points out Jesse Eisenberg and Woody Harrelson are in both Zombieland movies and both Now You See Me movies together. And Woody Harrelson is in both Zombieland movies and in Venom, all by the same director. The name of the character Zoe Deutsch plays, Madison, is both a common girl's name and, in keeping with the series theme of naming characters after American cities, the capital of Wisconsin. So is that part of, like, she's, she's obviously the dumb blonde type. But is it also saying that people from Wisconsin are stupid? Because I mean, the fact that Madison is the cap that that's not, you know, that's that's not some de in some some carefully coded message. People know that that's just something you can look up. So yeah. And Zombies being attracted to the fireworks is a reference to the land of the dead, where they launch fireworks from the dead, reckoning to draw the zombies away from the team scavenging for supplies. And it was hinted that Jesse Eisenberg's character Columbus will have a set of new rules connected to this film. In fact, it's actually Thomas Middleditch who plays a Columbus-like character named Flagstaff, who has his own similar set of commandments. I, I quite like the thing of, you know, Oh I, oh, I like commandments. It's it's like biblical. It's just yeah. And the leaked plot of the film mentions that there will be new types of zombies, specifically called the super zombies. I'll just call them the super. In the film, they refer to as T eight hundred zombies because, like the T eight hundred Terminators and the Terminator, they are almost impossible to kill. I like that they specified here the Terminator because that's where they're no, almost impossible to kill. You know, not like the second movie where we see one killed within seconds in the opening, which completely. I'm moving on. I can't believe there are people who like the second movie more than the first one. I've done entire videos on that. I'm not going to get into it here. A poster for Garfield 3 can be seen in the mall before Columbus finds Madison. As a. I like that. And yeah, here it says Bill Murray never made a third Garfield film. He's still alive. What did you anyway? And Someone put put this in the trivia, but said this is intended for the crazy credit section. I think you need more practice operating your content submitting machine for the MDB. I do kind of respect that someone actually, someone like... Someone read that and still left it in the trivia. Was that, that like spite? Like, if you can't figure it out, I'm not going to do it for you or something. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure they have to be, yeah, they must be reviewed before they go up. They can't just go up or you could write complete nonsense. So, yeah. Anyway. And let's see. <laughs> now. Yeah, crazy credit says the torch lady. I mean, I guess that's one. Yeah. Attacked by two zombies and beats them off. Fights them off. She doesn't beat them off. And using items from around the room, he fights on. You know, Bill Murray fights off the 
zombies. And that brings us to Wikipedia. Now, let's see. Talk of the Zombieland sequel began before the release of the first installment. With a recent remake of suggesting ideas and the cast voicing their, voicing their desire to make a second film, whether the project languished in development hell for several years before finally being confirmed in July 2018. Four main stars and Fleischer have signed on that month. An additional cast member joining Dustin Wilson joined early 2019. The movie took place from January to March 2019. Yeah. It, it is pretty wild that it's, uh, yeah. But they all showed back up for it, and everyone seemed game. You know, whenever Abigail Breslin was given a chance to, you know, she did really, yeah. You know, the, the, you can still see the, the, you know, she still has some of the same traits as me, excuse me, many of them. It's, it's basically just, she's in that, you know, actually, well, yeah, man, I mean, they're not playing it as she's a, no, they, they, no, she must be 22 because they say she's, she was 12 in the first. So it's not quite the, the rebellious teenage thing, but. Yeah. And anyway, I uh, it it makes sense. I I feel like yeah, it received positive reviews from critics, with particular praise for Deutsch's performance, and has grossed forty million dollars worldwide. I don't really have anything to add to the plot outline. Let's see. I like that the cast, it starts with Woody Harrelson, moves on to Jesse Eisenberg, even though it says, you know, Woody Harrelson is Tallahassee, Columbus's trusted partner. Who's Columbus? It's just, I mean, I, mean, I guess you could say that it's, you, you read the, the name Columbus further up. It's just, it's a little weird. Because the next then says, Jesse Eisenberg is Columbus, a hardened survivor. It kind of feels like the, the yeah, anyway. The hardened survivor one should have been over the one that's called the partner of the second one, anyway. And I like how many of these are just referred to as hardened survivors. And yeah, Rosario Dawson is straight up listed as Tallahassee's love interest. I didn't read that before watching the movie. I have to admit, I, when, when they first meet Berkeley, like, I don't remember what it is Emma is talking about, but she's talking about something, and, and Abigail is like, stop, and she's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm talking about this, no, 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 literally, stop, or, you know, and they almost run him over, and he just stands there, now. Nah. Luke Wilson as Albuquerque, Flagstaff's partner, whose personality mirrors Tallahassee. Thomas Meldridge as Flagstaff, Albuquerque's partner, who shares similarities with Columbus. I, did, were, they, were they worried that it would be thought of as too derivative if they just used the same sentence? Anyway. Now. Nah. Yeah, and the you know before this movie, they did make a TV pilot, and it apparently didn't do very well, so it didn't. Yeah, I I already forget if it was supposed to be the same characters, but it was a different cast. I do think 
I, I'm not sure it's going to happen now. But I think it would make a lot of sense to make a TV show out of this concept. I think you can have a lot of fun with that. You know, going, traveling around America and and dealing with zombies. I, th I think that would make a lot of sense. I haven't watched the, the TV pilot. It's on Love Film and Amazon Video, neither of which I have. And I'm very happy that I don't. Now, let's see. Okay, and yeah, so the you know this movie finished third behind Maleficent and Joker. That's pretty impressive. Like, yeah, there are probably more people who are super hyped about Maleficent two than Zombieland two. Now, a mobile game titled Zombieland Double Tapper was released along with the film featuring the character. And the film also has a twin stick shooter video game titled Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip. Yeah, that's. Okay, so PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and Windows. Okay, I might have to look at I, I TV series and video game that are some of the most like super make sense as like yeah you that that makes a lot of sense.